for you, the president. What? What? That's not why you called. Hosted by Lefty. I deserve to be blown. Dr. Chiz. One more chance. Thursday, 7 p.m. Central. It's That's Not Why You Called. And here we go. Chiz, I get nothing out of you. Usually coming out of the, you know, you do this. I was sending a tweet. I was sending the tweets. The you know, I didn't screw up the intro. Yeah, unprofessional show over. That's it. Thank you, everybody. We got to get out of here. Appreciate <laughs> likes and favorites, as always. Is that our new sponsor? Sponsored by whales. What the hell are... What are what whales? Are the, what are those? like Walmart are the, version of... No, goldfish. these are dollar store version of oh. goldfish. All right. Oh, really? Oh, so like whale... Uh, I get... Okay, that makes a lot of... <laughs> That's okay. All right, that's fine. They're yeah. not smoky barbecue, but they're still good. Smoky barbecue wheat thins. That was what we need. Uh, yeah, who makes these? Cheetos. Who makes these sons of bitches? Nabisco. Nabisco. Nabisco, send us money. You now owe us for get Cheetos stuff. Um, anyway, welcome all of you to that's not why you called episode fourteen occurring. I got the date right, August fifteenth, two thousand and thirteen. Chiz, thankfully. Yeah. Uh, let me yeah, know. We're not doing this in the past. Yeah, I definitely got caught copy hey, pasting cool titles. Was added. Thank you, Katie. Oh, no really? Problem. Is Katie gonna play sound sound bites? No. So many. See, That's you know, she could have added it before the show started, but she didn't because she was busy no. busy stuffing her face with steak. I was. And hungry. now I'm hungry. And now, right? And I'm pissed. Not well, because you were eating and being unprofessional. Because you know, this show is nothing if not totally professional. 100% of the time. Hey, there are people out there that agree. We are professional. Right. And right. they hold us yeah. to that standard and they're angry. Yeah. Or not. yeah. Attendant <laughs> is professionalism. <laughs> We've showed up. We've showed up. That's like, what, 99% of life? One of those cliche terms? 99% of life is showing up. Right? What's that crappy baseball movie with Keanu Reeves? Yeah, it's a piece of shit. I've never seen it, but it sucks. I don't even know what you're talking about. Hardball, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves it. It's, it's a universally loved movie. People are like, oh my god, Hardball! One of the kids freaking dies. There. Saved you two hours. Wow. You <laughs> Never didn't heard of it. Spoiler so. alert. Yeah, you, you don't even I get a really spoiler alert for that. I to watch it. No. I'm I'm just, you know, everybody, it. It's up there with The Godfather in terms of if you haven't seen it, you're a gigantic douche. I'm a gigantic douche then. Yeah, well, I, I, like we needed to, like we needed your yeah, lack like the of movie was the qualifier, right? To that's the that's the pushover. That's the that's the tipping point at which I was on the eh, just kind of a bad guy. Now you're a douche because you've never mm -hmm. seen Hardball. But uh, but yeah, it's one of those movies. Anyway, I'm your host Lefty as we try to get through the proppers on this awful, prof Who's that? awfully professionally show. Professional, profession. Damn it! I'm your host Lefty. Um, <laughs> I appreciate, as always, everybody that likes the stream, likes the video, uh, VOD. I love seeing the scroll, the roll of likes on my Twitter feed. Um, it does help the show, and we greatly appreciate it. Across the way is our host, Dr. Chiz. You can follow him at Dr. Chiz on Twitter. You can also find a stream, a link to his streaming page uh, in the description, twitch.tv. Is it Dr. Chiz or Dr. Yeah. Coffee MD? Is it twitch.tv slash Dr. Chiz. Damn, doctor. Talking. Talking. I, 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 <laughs> Katie, Twitter, on the description. Ah, Katie is the producer. You that... sound exactly like my character in Payday. <laughs> <laughs> your Katie, you're laughing. You don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> what were you laughing at just there? What was I laughing at? Yeah. I don't even remember. That was a pity laugh. That was a pity laugh. That was just a, I'm laughing because I'm supposed to laugh. Pretty much. At something. <laughs> I'll admit it. Because you have no idea the joke that we... Nope. You, I'm reading stuff. Stop it. <laughs> yes, awesome. it does. Carry on. <laughs> Proceed. So how many things do you laugh at that you don't normally yeah. find funny? What is but that you just feel To be honest with you, that's probably like the fourth time I've ever done that. What, what other times have what you done that? Times? I don't remember. I'm just guessing. Probably around four. Do you do that with me regularly? 
No. Don't even. No. Stop it. I is I concerned. No. Oh my god. Yeah, she got busted fake laughing at stuff. Faker! You're faking things on YouTube, faker! Phony. <laughs> You're a big fat You're a big phony. phony. Oh my gosh. Really? Katie's our producer that doesn't talk and doesn't play sound bites. I don't. And everybody gets mad at it. Apparently her, fakes laughing. Yeah. What else do you Worst fake, Katie? <laughs> really? Because now I'm worried. Oh my god! Now Stop. I've planted that thought in my own head. Oh my God. And me no likey. Goodness gracious. <laughs> if you want to get in touch with the show, you obviously have the comments in front of you. We greatly encourage you to do that. Uh, but also, you can tweet us, hashtag TNWYC on Twitter. Just add that to your tweet. We will be able to read it. Pound sign TNWYC. Pound sign. Pound. You're doing it. What are you. What is, it's this, well, bro. Yeah, I was going to. Put my fingers in. holding. So oh, that. there you go. Yeah, you Pound. go. You've got four other digits. Still looks kind of Not four other. You've got two other. Four other digits. <laughs> Count you've dang. added four digits. Yeah, you've got you've got uh, you got six fingers. Is that that that's the dominant gene, right? Is what? six fingers? Humans being born with six fingers. How is it the dominant what? gene then? I heard that's a I I maybe it's just a myth then. That it's it the, sounds a lot like a myth. The dominant form of the gene is, or whatever gene denotes. So you're, you, right. So, every so you're saying that having a normal... gene. Right. It's just. Mm. It's just. Uh, like if a parent somehow passes that gene on, then you're just having it. It's There's not. It's no not like a. It. It's not like a finger. It's like just a little nub. Um, there was a pitcher in the major leagues for a while, Antonio Alfonseca. He had a. He had a sixth finger. Oh, he was, but it was cheating. No, no, it was just a little nub. It didn't. You know, it wasn't really anything. So it wasn't functional or anything. Yeah. So uh, kind of creepy. Ball, though. Yeah. He no, he could no. It was just a little ball. nub here, and you hold the baseball, or like in this area of your hand on one side but of the hand. You if you're going to throw it and you curve it though, where your pinky is, that extra finger could add some more backspin to it. <laughs> it could. He's a cheater. And Stripped totally off on of everything achieved. he ever achieved. Okay. Oh gosh. It, which wasn't all that much. I don't think. I don't remember. Was Antonio Alfonseca any good? I don't remember. Yeah. I like he was, he was around for a while, but he wasn't. I don't remember him exactly being dominant or you know the stuff of legend. So no. you wouldn't be taking away much from Antonio Alf Alfonseca. I am Antonio yeah. Alfonseca. So, but yeah, that dude's cool. <laughs> we got a lot to talk about this week. A lot of people are tweeting us, so they want to hear about us talk about UM, what happened at UMG Atlanta with uh, an ML, or not an MLG team, but a pro professional Call of Duty team getting in a little bit of hot water and um, having a short lived run with a professional team. Um, also, what else we got on the docket? The Xbox One. Mm -hmm. Stuff. The Xbox One stuff, and then there's. <laughs> There's things you know, the Xbox One doesn't require the camera. professionalism. <laughs> yeah. My mask looks like eyebrows and a mustache. <laughs> See, there you didn't you didn't pity laugh, Katie. No. Because I you still didn't. didn't get the joke. No, it's uh um, no. <laughs> just did something stupid. And we played uh, Payday too. That's a you know, that's a perfect, perfect segue. Because we like to start off the show, as we always do, talking about what we've been doing on our respective YouTube channels. Um, uh, we Chiz and I actually today sat down and played Payday 2, which is out now on Steam. You can go check it out. Not Payday on 2. Console. Not Right. It's not a, well, it's out on console. You can buy it on console if you can find... Yeah, if you can find physical copies. Because I guess Valve publishes that, right? So it would be Valve's... Valve, do they? I would assume so. Valve publishes. I mean, who Today. else? Well, Overkill is the developer, and Valve, I think, is the publisher. I think it's a Katie, it's a Google. Yeah, Katie, if you're not going to play sound bites or talk, <laughs> Google who published um, or who is publishing Payday Two on um, on console. I want to see who's who's sending that. But yeah, what did, what was the story with that? So there's no. Physical copies. The release date has come and gone, but there are no physical copies at retail outlets. Yes, they forgot to ship them. They did they forget to, or was it? I think. 
<laughs> Don't quote me on that. We're going with it. What other option is there? They didn't print the disc. Then they'd be backed up for like a month. Yeah, I I don't know. If it was just a maybe like a database error, somebody, you know, they they put down the wrong date. They were off by two days. You know, somebody said, well, it's, you know, it's the 13th or the 12th. And then they put down, you know, the 14th ship by this. Or maybe it, maybe it was as simple as ship by versus ship on. Maybe. Because I know that's, you know, because, maybe. right, you always have that problem with people. It's like on three. Well, wait a minute now. Is it on, on three? three? Is it three. right? Is it the count after three? Because you get the cadence. You get one, two, three. Is it as soon as I th say three, or is it one, two, three, push, or whatever? <laughs> what? Why should we get for your pushing example. something? I don't know. Okay. The one for me that I don't like is um, I need this by this certain date. You know, mm -hmm. like I need this by. The fifteenth. It's like, well, do you right. need it beforehand or do you need it on that day? You know, it's like I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like sixteenth yeah. is the cutoff. Well, does that mean if I do it before the sixteenth, it's the cutoff, or mm -hmm. the sixteenth? You won't take it past the sixteenth. Where is the gray area? That's where know. we're at. Language. Yeah, we need to default as a society to different settings. We need to know if you say, you know. On three, we need a default setting where you can opt out of either going on three or the count after three. You can opt out of that, but you have to specifically say, no, 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 we are going, you know, after th we're doing the spe we're doing the special one, right? Because we need we all need to default to, you know, this is the way everybody does it. So let us know in the comments or tweet us hashtag TNWYC what kind of guy you are. I'm coming person. up with uh, 505 games. I'm seeing. 505 games published uh, payday on console. Mm, yes. <laughs> oh, okay, that's right. I remember seeing that on uh, on Reddit. Well, whoever they are, they fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody's gonna get fired. Probably the guy at the loading dock. <laughs> Some low level I didn't guy. Didn't show up to work that day. Like I'm the driver. What do you want from me? <laughs> You gotta take the game to the store. I'm tired today. Got to the game to the store. Now, some people are saying you can get, uh, you can order a hard copy online, like from Amazon, and you'll get it. But actually, going walking into a retail shop, you will not be able to find copies of Payday Two. So, then what? It's something related to their. To a distribution issue. Well, it's got yeah, it's got to be an infrastructure. If Amazon can do it, then it's. I mean, Amazon has their own distribution. Mm -hmm. So whoever published it already sent it to Amazon to warehouse. So whoever is at the GameStop, Walmart, etc. warehouse. Ah, it could be the wholesalers. Yes. Ah, you see, that's a, that's not an often talked about medium between the wholesalers. Between yeah, between the publishers and the retailers. The you know, because people think. Um, you know, for instance, since we're going to be talking about Call of Duty Ghosts, that's another topic we got on the docket today, talking about Call of Duty Ghosts reveal. Um, people like uh, Call of Duty every single year. It's a race to see how much money the Call of Duty title can generate in a week. And they multiply the number of sales by, you know, what your, what the average sale price is, usually somewhere around fifty nine ninety nine, And they say, oh, it generated this amount of money. And so a lot of people immediately attribute that amount of money to Activision. But yeah. that's not really the case because the retailers... Well, actually, the retailers don't make very much money. They don't make that much. They, they the make a little. Not a, not a lot. The wholesalers make about, what, $10 a unit? Something like that. They yeah. make a good amount of money per unit. And then the publishers get whatever that is. So publishers are probably only taking home about... I don't know. I'm just going to pull a number out of thin air, but that sounds relatively reasonable. Probably 30%. about 30% of each yeah. unit price? Yeah. I was going to say 40, but okay. 30% of each unit price. And that's and that's just that's total. That's not profit. That's net. Right. And then because out of that you got to pay for the the stuff. So the games business is a probably is a little bit harder than uh, than what people like to think. But the advent of digital di digital distribution changes that equation. 
Because yep. no longer you you no longer have the overhead of the retailers, which wasn't much overhead in the first place, but still it's a little bit. Mm-hmm. And the wholesalers or the function of the wholesalers, which is distributing your content, <clears throat> that cost is greatly reduced because all you need now are servers. Yeah. To distribute it. You don't need to hire staff and overhead and all that. You stuff. don't got to pay truck. You don't have to pay truck drivers. You don't have to, you know, do anything. All you got to do Definitely. is just digitally copy the game. You don't have to pay for for packaging. Every copy you sell digitally is a copy that you didn't have to pay to, to have printed, packaged, and shipped. But games still cost on digital. Only, but that's for digitally. Because, like, look at the games that are still around the same price as something you can get in a retail store. Mm-hmm. As opposed to, like, an indie game, which is way cheaper. Mm-hmm. It's because, you know, it's the same reason why the Xbox Marketplace is still more expensive than, like, a used game at GameStop. It's because they can't uh, give you a huge discount on the digital distribution because then they're fucking their, uh, retail, their re- retailers mm-hmm. in that regards. So they can't do that because they're competing. they're competing against themselves, essentially. Until you completely get rid of the retail side of it, you're not going to see things on the Xbox side start to drop their prices. Same goes for Steam, though, too. I mean, Steam, look, they drop... Usually it's $10 cheaper Mm -hmm. for a PC download over... Even a disc, a PC disc is still cheaper than what you can get for, like, the console version of it. But it's the same issue because the game's cross... It's multi-platform. Whereas something that's only on PC, like, is usually way cheaper when it's only there and it's distributed digitally. Like well, Payday 2, mm-hmm. I don't know why that one is cheaper. That's cheaper across the board. I guess it's just because it doesn't have a solid single player. No, and it's it's not... It's very... Um, the thing about Payday is that it it's not... Uh, it's not particularly story-driven. There's not a lot of voice acting, writing, narration... Animations. There's not. Are, are there any even any cutscenes? I don't think so. I mean, they they filmed no, some live action intro stuff. Things. Yeah. Transitional. But and, and that's it. That's that's all they 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 do. And payday is. I don't know how to really to describe it because even even a game like um, Borderlands Two, or Borderlands has a storied component, even though it's multiplayer. You there's still. Yeah. You know, you're still doing stuff, but payday too. It's very it's just here are the levels, here are the objectives. Well that's what's interesting, like where Titanfall is gonna give their price point. I assume Titanfall will still be like a fifty nine dollar, you know, fifty nine ninety nine game, even though that's even in the same it's the closest I can think of to a game like Payday where it is just strictly a multiplayer thing. Like Titanfall is just a multiplayer game with some campaign elements to it, mm-hmm. like on screen stuff and shit like that going on. Like there's a kind of story but they've i mean if you look at how they've been making it behind the scenes and everything it's a multiplayer game so but that one's gonna be pushed for 59.99 and because they can get 59.99 out of it Mm -hmm. whereas i think something like payday 2 although payday the the first one was really great and people loved it and probably would have paid the 59.99 more people would get it for the cheaper cost Mm -hmm. so i don't know what kind of games that are just multiplayer only go for the full retail price nowadays Mm-hmm. But on the opposite, a single player game will still go for fifty nine ninety nine, like Bioshock One or something. Mm-hmm. So it's like where, which is weird because you could get more time and usage out of a multiplayer game for the money you're putting into it than a single player game. You beat that, you're done. Right. Unless it's like something like Skyrim, which is like sixty plus hours, you know, potentially. But your basic campaign, like Bioshock, is maybe ten hours, and then what do you do after that? There's nothing yeah. else. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but does that justify the $59 tagline onto it? Well, I mean, think about it. Let's see. If you were to get 10 hours of, like, let's consider it hours of entertainment. Mm -hmm. If you want to get 10 hours worth of movie entertainment, what is that going to run you? Movie, average movie is an hour and a half, hour 40 minutes. Yeah, so what, like seven movies? Yes, or thereabouts. Six, seven. So it's going to be... 70 bucks more than that because you're, you uh, yeah, know, you're paying what 12 14 dollars 12 14 dollars for a movie ticket and even right. if you just buy the die the die by day the dvd the die by day it's still the gonna cost the same we're watching money. dvd days want some ice cream <laughs> ice cream lieutenant diane 
Okay. Yeah, gotta, and 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 one, but and also, you know, once you the entertainment you of a movie, either. right? The, the entertainment over. of the movie is fleeting. Like yeah. you know, you watch it's a movie finite. once, you can remember it, your memories you have, but you can't you go back and watch it. But a game you can, you know, I can play yeah. Bioshock Infinite again, even though, um, you know, I beat it. So. Yeah. Which I have nothing against because I'd rather have you make a really solid, hardcore, awesome campaign single player, and that's it, rather mm -hmm. than you splitting it up into two different teams and pulling a Bioshock 2 where you've got a mediocre campaign and a horrific mm -hmm. uh, multiplayer. I don't like that multiplayer. And <laughs> good thing they took it out of Infinite, and it's bad. And I, I don't like you. It's a different studio that made Bioshock 2 than the first one. Yeah, uh, 2K, like you. 2K, 2K Marin. Marin, Marin, Marin I think. yeah. And I don't like you because I spent hours and days grinding to level 40 in the multiplayer to get my last achievement in 100% of the game. And two weeks later, you add DLC with multiplayer achievements. And I don't like that because that is a gone 100% of the game. <laughs> Not nice. Not nice. The multiplayer is bad, too. But Bioshock Infinite did, I don't know if you played, I doubt you have, the DLC for it. Their first DLC is like a horde-based thing mm -hmm. with challenges. That's the first one. And the second one, which is like their big one, is uh, something under the sea or something. It's Burial like a, at sea. It's going to take place in Rapture, yeah. Gonna, yeah in Rapture. No combat. The first no part. Combat? Yeah, the, the first part of it. It's a two-part DLC. The first part is going to be dropping sometime... Uh, I think the first DLC just dropped for Infinite, didn't it? And yeah, Burial at Sea is coming later. Um, but the first part, the uh, the creative director from... It's Irrational Games, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, Ken Levine said um, there's going to be no combat in that first part. That's cool. I'm down for that. <clears throat> I, I, like, I, I heard that, and I'm I'm interested. I'm not... I'm not, you know, oh, shut up and take my money, but I'm interested about what does that mean? Is it going to be, is it like a mystery? Is it going to be a game where you have movement and motion and you get to go do things and like look for this and try to, try to solve puzzles and stuff? O okay, but when I heard, you know, I, I don't play Bioshock Infinite or Bioshock for the combat necessarily. I mean, there's, there's a incredible narrative uh, and visuals all wrapped up in there but I, I, I there is combat and the combat made the action makes it all interesting and it actually plays to the story somewhat yeah and so when i hear that there's going to be no combat i'm thinking well am i just going to be paying for a you know a two-hour cut scene whatever it's going to be for 10 9.99 7.99 for the dlc mm -hmm. for one cut scene mm -hmm. is that I'm not gonna. I, I don't feel I'm gonna pay for that. So I'm interested to hear more about what the, this no, this concept of no combat in Bioshock and telling a narrative still. Uh, but I'm tentative because it, to me it just it doesn't does not compute. I would think it has something to do with like being in like a detective mode kind of puzzle solving mm -hmm. kind of thing because Infinite happens before Rapture. Yes. So when they go there, that you're going to see the events unfold before the first uh, mm -hmm. Bioshock 1, before they all turn into splicers, spoiler alert, even though you should know that <laughs> the game starts up and there's something attacking you. Yeah. Um, that so, first murder scene in, in the first Bioshock, yeah. where you see that splicer just eviscerate that guy, that was gr that's still, that game was what, 2007? 2007. That's still gruesome and scary. Oh, gruesome. Yep. Don't the like scariest that. moment in Bioshock One, it's it got me twice on two separate playthroughs. Is when you're going through, <laughs> I know yeah, yeah. It's when you're going through like a dentist area and it's like s smoky and misty in there, mm -hmm. and like no matter what, I always fall for. Like I, I go in there, I hear noises, quiet. I'm looking through a cabinet, getting stuff. I turn around, and there's a dentist splicer in my face, yep. and I scream like a girl every time. Yep. I do the it's same thing too. It's scary. uh it's not it's it's weird because the one that everybody knows is when you first get the shotgun in Bioshock where you go to that room and it's in the middle 
the, the yeah. room is dark save for a single light in the middle that's shining down over the shotgun you pick it up and then the lights go off and then you hear people moving around yeah. you and that was freaky enough but the dentist part you're talking about is is in a it's like it tucked away in a little corner of of the first level yeah you're like going through a crawl space i'm pretty sure and you come up into the room yeah, it's it, you don't have to go there to advance the story. It's not part of any real objective. You go there for the loot. I think you get, um, do you get a, a plasmid or? No, I don't think so. I think it's a plasmid. You, you, but you get something. It's it worthwhile a little bit. But yeah, it that yeah. was a that was really scary because you go and you interact. I think it was a safe that you unlock. You have to hack the safe and yeah. you open it and and the way you know just the engine works. <laughs> And he's right, and then you just you turn around, and he's right there. And even I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've played it multiple times too, and I know he's there. I know what's coming, yeah. and I, I know there's going to be a thing looking at you right in the face when you mm-hmm. turn around from this. Yeah. Don't they be scared. They had things like that in uh, Infinite too. They had those little like you like pull a lever and turn around, and a dude's standing there, and he just starts like screaming at you. Oh, the the silent boy. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's that like wheelchair with the head in it that like oh, no, rolls screw, towards no, you really creepily. Nope. Nope. Oh. Nope. No. Nope. Mm-mm. Done. Done. Oh, done. Done. God. Done. The first time I saw that, I was yeah. doing my let's play, and I was just I I wanted to. I was like, I don't want to play. I don't want to play anymore. This freaks me out. <laughs> it was a. It was one of those George Washington heads that that those characters wear, and it was like it was just yeah, in, that was a, in a wheelchair, and the wheelchair was just slowly rolling towards you out of mm-hmm. nowhere. I remember just kind of standing there, like, should I go? Uh-huh. Or oh, and and, and uh, thinking about Bioshock One, one of the most, it wasn't a jump scare, just the most eerie things. One of the most eerie parts was, um, there are these. I think you do it when you get to it when there's uh, you're doing the, um, the like the artist guy, the performer mm-hmm. or whatever. And he wants to, you know, make art out of. Oh, that's people. a creepy area. And you're going through this one place, and you see, it's it's this big room, and across it's all all the way in the corner from the entrance, is this thing, and you see these humanoid things posed, and you think they're just inanimate they objects, like statues. right? They, they look like statues. So you walk, and then you go do whatever it is you, you have to do in that corner, and you turn around. They're not in your face, but they've moved. Yeah. And you're just like, uh... There's another one in that same area. There's a room you go into a bathroom, and you go in it, and there's nothing there. Uh-huh. And I think if you go back in it, there's, like, statues everywhere in there. Yeah, that's it. That's it, yes. Uh, yeah. It's no. really eerie. Nope. Not... It's creepy. Uh, it's it's creepy to think about. I'm just thinking about it now. I'm like, oh, uh, the first one was like actually it. a pretty scary game. The second one was the second one was awful. Pretty bad. The second one was bad. It was yeah. It it was interesting what they tried to do, but but it really wasn't because it was like, well, what do we got to do now? Oh, we got to write the story. Well, everybody likes the big daddy. What if you played as a big daddy? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's the whole story. But you, Even though you get shot in the face at the beginning in the opening cutscene. Right, and you're they not... don't touch on that. You don't feel like a big daddy. You don't no, feel you like a... a drill. At the end, you feel powerful. And... Because once you've got everything stacked, okay. But, you know, you don't... You don't feel normal. And then they also had to make that... That, that it's narrative... It's a deus ex machina because, I mean... The big daddies you encounter the entire time in Bioshock 1, there are two versions. There's the big dude with the drill, and there's the one with the cannon or whatever. Mm-hmm. But in the two, they're like, you get to play as a big daddy. Well, how are we going to work that out? I mean, they're not humans. All right, it's an alpha big daddy. It's just a dude in like a kind of a normal-looking scuba diver suit. He's got a helmet on. He can still use the plasmids, and he has the drill arm. It's like, well, then why did you fucking cancel that generation? <laughs> right. Where why they get the plasmids that? and the drill gun. Why and did he's you just... fast, and he's... Yeah, he's, he's still agile. got the drill and he's got the the plasmids. Why'd you cancel that? That was good. That's better than the big fat slow one. Yeah, I don't understand. They just totally wrote around all that just to make it work so you get to play as a big daddy, which was not all it was cracked up to be. No, and there was it wasn't the only really cool part of that game was when you played as a little sister. That was cool. And you got to see her. things from you there. You got to see things through her eyes. 
and then it's like, oh, oh, Mr. Okay. Bubbles, we gotta get your stuff, Mr. Bubbles. That's why yeah. they're not, you know, scared, right? Because they think it's all just a thing. Unicorns and rainbows. And then wasn't there just some awful escort mission in there where you had to pretend? There's a couple. You had to like when you were first learning to take around your, you know, a little sister. And you had to walk around this oh, yeah, area. You had to take her to some bodies and get her to harvest them. And it's just like, I stop making escort missions. <laughs> They're awful. They're not fun. That's all of Resident Evil 4. Oh, There's really? one big escort mission with Ugh. Ashley. She didn't do anything. Yeah. And if they grab her and run out of frame with her, you fucking lose. See, and, and Bioshock Infinite did a great job is that because it's all a big escort mission, too, because you've got this non-playable character, yeah. Elizabeth, near you all the time. But you don't have to worry about her health. You don't have to worry about um, her just, like, walking away and getting lost, although sometimes the logic gets weird, and, and but it's, it's not, like, a constant thing. Um, so they did a good job of, of really making did Elizabeth a companion. Shit? Yeah, I, I beat it. Did you like the ending? I didn't know. Don't no. tell me because I haven't seen it. But I heard it was kind of deep mm. to do with Elizabeth's powers. Yes. It, we'll talk about the ending and because it has to deal with quantum mechanics, which yeah. I have. Uh, I know that much, but I don't want to know the ending. I, okay. Well, I'll, I'll try to cover it as best I can. We'll discuss it a little bit without us. Uh, for the next se segment, there is a standing spoiler alert. Okay. I think we can all make that make that deal we'll be right back that's not why you called as always we do appreciate liking uh the stream slash the vod if this is when you're watching it i love seeing it roll through during the breaks when we come back we're going to talk a little bit more about maybe some quantum mechanics you know this show has gotten really sciencey and nerdy and i we're really smart, like it problem? yeah because we're really smart damn it i don't see any science people trying to prove us wrong and when they do guess nope. what we're smarter than them because science because <laughs> our we're, our science is better than your science and we're going to talk about UMG Atlanta and uh, a few other things. You can help me make a decision on live streaming video games and what games I need to buy coming up. So yes. be sure to stick around. That's not why you called. We'll be right back. Butterfingers. Butterfingers.
That's not why you called. Thursday, 7 p.m. Central. That's not why you called. Welcome back. That's not why you called. Are you are you really conducting that intro? I don't even think they're Ke- no. keeping the time, Chiz. Yeah. One, two, three. One and two. No. Well, One you can keep time two, for any. And a three and a you four can keep and time a... for or conduct and keep time for any musical piece. So to yeah, say. you can because if you're not in time. You don't have music. You're not time to screw up, Katie. God, learn to play oh, an I instrument. Mean, that would not be the right time for that. Never mind. You're also talking to the guy that grabs a Guitar Hero 2 or Guitar Hi. Hero controller to. The real one is right next to it. All uh-huh. right. So uh-huh. why didn't you grab right that there. one? Because it's heavier. Lazy. To one and unprofessional. Ex- and unprofessional. There you go. There work. goes there. That's Katie's word allotment for the segment. So we'll be seeing her at the top of the hour. Might Hearing be from professional, her. but at least I don't fake laugh. Oh, shots fired! Shots fired! So what was this? Okay. Now there was a guy Im- trying to impersonate me in the chat. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. At first, I thought it was you because he said, "I don't have pants on." Well, I don't. And that was something that I said to you before we started the yeah, stream. Yeah, uh-huh. they made me so go. So that was what? weird. Yeah. But then he said something else. Like he kept talking. And I'm like, well, that's not something he would say. And then he started not talking typing. about sponsorships. Yeah. And like, oh, um, what did he say? About. He's gonna make us some money. Got. No. Ten large, for a twenty second ad. Ten grand for twenty second ad. Yeah. Sponsor a yeah. segment of the show. This segment. Of, this segment. Of that's not why you called. Brought to you by. Blah, 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 whatever your business is. <laughs> no, 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 that's exactly that's all I'm going to say. It. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care what the name of your business is. It's going to be brought we'll to you by the blah, blah, blah. There. You'll yeah. have the picture up there. They can read it themselves. Yeah, okay, it's but, a video mm, podcast. Yeah. But as far as what we say, blah, you have to pay more for coherent sentences. <laughs> right. That's, a, that's the basic We're just package. Point to this. Is the image. The basic package is the image. If you want, you know. Are we going to charge by number of characters? We're, we're yes. going to charge by Syllables. number of words that you say, Syllables. Katie. <laughs> that I say. Yeah, that you say. That'll be really cheap. <laughs> I don't say that. Did you just words. call yourself cheap? No, I don't. Easy? What? what? Mm, this is no. why you don't talk. <laughs> you open your mouth I, once. I would say because I don't talk that much. You, you are not making any something. sense. You're not okay. making any sense. All right. Sure. Anyway, uh, when we left off last time, uh, as always, again, we appreciate everybody that likes to stream. I saw a lot of people liking it. Um, talking about the Bioshock Infinite, the ending. Not enough. Yes, I want to see more. More. All the likes. Um, the ending dealt in. Um, it, it took a, a few liberties with the idea of quantum mechanics and the idea of multiple universes. Um, one art, one interview I saw before the release of Bioshock Infinite, uh, the the director Ken Levine said that he read about the Schrodinger's cat, which is a thought experiment, um, often associated the with cat quantum dead mechanics. Or alive. Right, that's the that's the cat. It, I'll explain Schrodinger's cat in a little bit, but um, I saw that and he said, you know, we took a lot that idea of the Schrodinger's cat thought experiment. Um, it really stuck with me, and and we tried to impl- implement that into the narrative, and it really starts to play out towards the end. The idea of Schrodinger's cat. Now, Schrodinger's cat is a thought experiment. Ironically, though, it was originally posed to um, uh, to to contrast and to call into question some of the uh, stipulations of um, quantum mechanics and the idea of uh, the idea generally is that a system exists of not as uh, potentials, but as a sum of every possible state of the system. That is how a system should be viewed. It's a, it, basically, I'm butchering it, but I'm not a, a quantum until physicist. Until observed. Well, until observed, Which yes. one of the possibilities Now, Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's cat is... The idea that you have a cat in a box that you can't see—it's you can't 
see the uh, or observe the cat. Uh, but you know it's there. You do know it is there. But did you just put your phone in the whales? No, I put my cigarettes in the whales. Oh, okay. Now, are they going to spontaneously combust or not? Maybe. But the um, in the box with the cat is a vial of poison. If tipped over, the um, the poison will kill the cat. And the poison is held... Uh, by a, a, a machine, or not, well, not a machine, but just a, uh, a contraption that depends on some random ion of some, some element appearing. A, a randomly selected version of some element uh, or atom appearing. And they say, okay, well, technically it wouldn't be an ion. An ion is a molecule, is it not? Or is it an atom? It's a molecule. Google. That's you. Can well, you explain it? Uh, but anyway, the idea is that the cat's life, whether the poison tips or doesn't tip, is dependent on this completely random quantum level particle, an atom, an electron, or an electron adding itself or not uh, to, create, to create this ion. And the idea is if you take quantum mechanics at face value, when quantum mechanics says systems exist as a sum of all their possibilities, as all their possible outcomes, then this means that the cat in this contraption is both alive and dead at the same time. We don't know until... Until we observe it. And it was meant to be a reductio ad absurdum, a reduction to the absurd, that this, we are going to take what quantum mechanics says and apply it to this, this very narrow situation, and it, it becomes absurd. And thus, it can't, be, it can't be that way. So Schrodinger's cat isn't necessarily um, representative of quantum mechanics. It was originally posed to, um, to discredit quantum mechanics, or at least that. Are you pouring water into your cigarettes? Or in the wet? This is the poison, potentially. Oh. Thank Not, you for pantomiming Schrodinger's yeah, cat. I was acting it out. Some you people did. need visuals. <laughs> right, visual aids. Katie, what have you found for us? Googling. Um, cats, Wikipedia so. is basically saying an ion is an atom or a molecule in which the total number okay, of so, electrons is not equal to total well, right, right. So basically, it could be either. One. Okay, so because I thought there were different, there was a different word for a, a, you know a molecule versus an atom. That's you yeah, know, it's called an atom. Too molecule. many for that has too many or too few electrons or protons. Jerk. But yeah, that's Schrodinger's cat, and um, Bioshock Infinite does a great job of, or, or it's a very interesting look at that, and the idea of multiple universes, and um, the idea that it's possible that we all exist as just the sum of of different different outcomes, different possibilities that we all are. And also this and, and it get, it delves a little bit into the idea of a multiverse and there's multiple version you know, an infinite number of universes with infinite, you know, probabilities of, of an infinite uh uh constructions. But I'm I and I'm not sure where that rests for in the scientific community. I don't know if the multiverse is still a thing. I know it was for a little bit. String theory was huge in the mid uh, in the first decade of, in the middle of the first decade of the century, around 2005, 2006, string theory was pretty big, uh, and they had ten dimensions to to make the math work to describe our universe. Eleven. And sometimes it's crazy. Um, you know, I I don't know from a science perspective where where membranes uh, where we are in the multiverse. Well, that was one thing. There, there was the membranes could account for the different universes and the Kalabi Yao manifolds, six dimensional space that come into and out of existence in our universe. It's, just, you know, it it led to really absurd things. But uh, so yeah. What was your question again? I'm sorry, I got a science boner. Did anyone have a question? I don't know. We wanted to do. We so. wanted to put a bow tie on. Um, on the Bioshock Infinite ending, but I didn't want to spoil anything. Did I do a I good I just asked you job? if it was good. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah, it was uh, good. Yeah. That's good. 
Well, How do you feel about 15 it? 15 minutes saying, yes, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> how did you feel, though, or how do you feel about it, that DLC coming out that's going to take you forward a little bit and go to Rapture? Like, do you, are you interested in it? Or are you I'm, like, no, it's a good bookend where Bioshock Infinite was. Please don't draw out the No, 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 no. I loved Rapture. I love Rapture. Yeah. I, I love the idea of it. And, you, you know, don't feel Rapture had its place in that? No, I wish they would story. do more. I wanted them to do more. I mean... I, I wish Bioshock 2, that abortion of a game and narrative wouldn't have happened, but the idea of, of Rapture as as sort of a character in the story is really, oh, really is. cool to me. And and like you you touched on it earlier, Chiz, you get to, you know, seeing it before it was uh before it was torn apart by its own in, by its own civil war. Um right. because previously the only time we had ever heard about uh Rapture before the war was through those audio logs and even then it was like during it was a in the lead up to that we never really got to see rapture as rapture and um i i was actually when they first announced bioshock infinite and they said this is this isn't going to have anything to do with rapture even though again spoiler alert standing spoiler alert um the ending of bioshock infinite kind of does involve rapture but um I was kind of upset. I was like, I want, there's more, Rapture has so much more you can do with it. Like, mm. if you wanted to turn Rapture into an MMO of sorts, if you wanted to repolish the multiplayer gameplay and make Rapture a, a, a livable world for multiple people, I'd, I'd check that out. You know, you had, obviously it would depend on their execution, but the idea of Rapture and what it is, I think it, it has a lot more left to go. And I hope they revisit it. And so I'm pumped to see. Uh, Don't bring back multiplayer. <laughs> do anything else you want with it. Don't do that. It was a colossal failure. Yeah, but it was. Please don't. I mean. <clears throat> no, it was bad. That's what it was. It was well, bad. Well, yeah, that was bad. But that doesn't mean r multiplayer doesn't work in the, in the Bioshock slash Rapture universe. That doesn't mean that necessarily. We're bio but it's like you said earlier, like people don't play Bioshock for the combat mechanics of it and it's not why they play it they play it for the narrative and the story and everything mm -hmm. about it it's just an element that adds to the narrative the engagement of what you're doing combat wise so mm -hmm. he said you know i don't know if i want to walk around for 40 minutes and do nothing but watch a cutscene. it plays a part but it, in telling the story which is why mm -hmm. it's good but that's why when they put out the first dlc which is just these challenges that is horde mode essentially mm -hmm. it's like why would they ever do this because it's not a combat driven yeah that game. yeah that it was thrown sense. in because their big dlc is the rapture one i mean it was something to throw out there because they said we got a deadline it's the first dlc so it was thrown out well we've there. got to justify the season pass because yeah. as much as ken levine likes to be an artiste and you know pound his chest about his integrity as an artist and as a, as a developer, he still wants to cash those damn checks, and he's going to do it. So, I was wondering about that. Like, How does this thing is, How would the season pass work? Because they're for every game now. Mm -hmm. Every game has a season pass. Batman Arkham Origins has a season pass. <sighs> it's just such a scam. Well, the, the Arkham City DLC was awful. Was it? It was bad. Yeah. What was it? Bad, bad, bad. Well, first of all, it was just a bunch of challenge mode stuff. Well, there you go. That's what they do. But they they did try. They did do a like a a narrative one to continue the narrative. Harley Quinn's Revenge. Yeah. Awful. It was short. It didn't do anything. It, there, there wasn't a continuation of any kind of story. There wasn't a cliffhanger to you know. It kind of explored the dynamic between Batman and Robin. It, at least in that universe, mm -hmm. um, and you know why Robin becomes Nightwing eventually. Spoiler alert! Um, what is that? What? What, what is that? What do you mean? What is what? Who's Nightwing? Nightwing is Robin leaves Batman in the lore, like throughout the lore of of Batman. Night Robin leaves Batman is to he become a bad Nightwing. Guy? No, it's. Uh, what is this? You know how it's like this in the DC universe: Batman and Superman are on the same side. They're both good guys fighting against villainy and all that stuff, but they don't really like each other and they don't trust each other. Yeah. They're they're very skeptical. That basically became 
Nightwing. Nightwing became that for Rob for Batman. It was they were they were they were both after the same thing, but they did uh, it was it was weird. So I think Batman is just a comic dick. book talk. Well, Batman is a dick to Robin. That's the thing, and that kind of covered it in Harley Quinn's Revenge. But Harley Quinn's Revenge, like it was just a. It was bad. It, it didn't. It didn't do anything. I mean, the, the DLC was awful. So I'm not going to be plunking down money uh, for a season pass for Batman: Arkham Origins. And also, Rocksteady isn't doing Arkham Origins. They're I working. Guess. They're working yeah. on another thing. This is somebody else. Hmm. But I mean, you know, it's I bad. feel like the DLC for these games since they started the season pass has been really lackluster. Like Assassin's Creed 2, that was before the season pass, mm-hmm. but. It was the first Assassin's Creed game with DLC, and I got it because I love that franchise. And it was so boring and meaningless, had nothing to do with anything. It was like, unlock these memory sequences. It right. didn't, didn't even have achievements tied to it, which is like the only reason I get DLC half the time is for that, just to finish the damn game. And, like, I don't know, when it comes to Con and Halo, it's just new maps, that's all it is. And now with the single player story narrative games, it seems that they just shoehorn a challenge or horde mode type thing into it. Mm -hmm. And then they throw out one narrative-related DLC. That's all they've been doing. I heard that the Assassin's Creed 3 George Washington DLC was really good, but I didn't know. Oh, King George or King King Washington or something like that? Yeah. I heard that was good. Well, but that's that's a nothing DLC because that's the problem as a storyteller um, for single player. I mean, DLC in a game like Call of Duty, multiplayer DLC makes sense. New maps, new this, new that. Keeps okay. It fresh. Right, Battlefield Three did it, and it was. I I was initially totally against it, but I gave it a shot, and uh, I I was very impressed with Dice and their offerings of DLC. Um, but when you're when you're talking about a single player game having add on content after release, the problem is you design and you write a single player game to have to be self containing. It it's a yeah. It it starts here, it arcs, and then it 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 ends, and it it's supposed to wrap up at the end, and it's supposed to be the self-contained thing. But if you DLC is trying to like, well, maybe we didn't wrap it up as much as we, you know, said we did, and and it, it makes you call into question at times if it's not done right. It makes you call into question the original storytelling. Like, well, why wasn't this covered? Why was this covered and not this? And and why? Why? What do I care about this DLC? Um, and why am I playing it? What What does this mean? Does Does this advance the story at all? That's the uh, Dishonored had the knife of Dunwall mm-hmm. was the first narrative DLC because it had the Dunwall trials, the Dunwall city trials, which was just horde mode. Um, yeah. But the Knife of Dunwall was the first one. And I thought about that. I'm like, well, Dishonored was a short game. I was really interested by it. It was a really fun game to play. But why am I playing the... Why would I buy and play this? What does this do for the story, for my interaction with the narrative? It doesn't really do anything. So I didn't end up buying it. So that's the tricky part with uh, creating DLC for single-player games. Because, you know, games are such big business now. And now this is why it's happening. Because, you know... You can't, when you release a game, you profit off of it once. You Mm -hmm. profit off of it when it's big, when it's getting sold. But companies now need to justify to their investors, like, well, we can can generate gobs of revenue, not just once a year, or in the case of publishers with multiple titles releasing a few times every year, we can, you know, raise the tide a little bit and we'll, we're making money throughout the fiscal year yeah we've got a quarterly income and uh and, th- and that's why you're going to see a lot of dlc shoehorned into into single player titles into into titles that normally don't have dlc and some some will do it right right some people will do it did, uh, i'm not a mass effect player so i want to get i want to get somebody those have all been good i've heard are, are those I think good one has been bad but okay. i think they've all been good but once again, that's a story base. I appreciate it because, as far as I know, I know nothing. But I think they're all story based, right? In narrative ones, it's not like they put in a horde mode in Mass Effect as one of the DLCs. As far as I know, I mean, I've heard they've been really good. Same thing goes for like Fallout Three or something like that. Done well. Mm-hmm. Yes. New Vegas. I right. Assume. The the DLC and stuff. See, I'm so old. I remember when it wasn't DLC; they were expansion packs. Well, yeah. 
right? Because you had to go to the <laughs> you had to go to the store and buy them. And I once bought an expansion pack thinking it was a standalone game, and I was really pissed. You failure! I'm an idiot. You are an idiot. I still remember I would pick up the battle chest from Blizzard games. It would have like Diablo, Diablo Two, and then yep. an expansion. Yeah, uh, same goes for StarCraft. What was the expansion for Diablo Two? Oh. It was uh, something of destruction. Lord of Destruction. Uh, Knight of Destruction. No. no not Knight. Because it was not. It I think it was Diablo, Diablo II Lord. It was his brother. It was yeah, it was Bale. Or whatever. Bale. Bale. Yeah. Bale runs all day. Oh, I remember doing Bale, Bale runs. runs. Lord of Destruction. Yeah, Lord Diablo II Lord of Destruction. That was and a fun ass game. Oh, why did Blizzard have to ruin that was it? My favorite game. Why did Blizzard have to ruin Diablo Three? Diablo Two was so much fun. It was pretty amazing. I put so many hours into that game. I would go to the Secret Cow level, hang Se- out, Secret Cow level, Bale run. Yeah, well, you had to do Diablo runs, and then you got up yeah. to a point where you could... Uh, I did those, though, once you got... Well, yeah, but you had to gear up if you were going to do bail runs, and then you had oh. to up the... Because I played hardcore. Yeah. And I remember the big thing there was TPPK, mm-hmm. uh, Town Portal Player Killing, because guys would just get their super-leveled-up characters, go oh, into your public yeah. game, right, declare you hostile, or and declare hostility, here. TP to you, kill you and it got to the point where they would teleport to you open a town portal and shoot at you and they would be out of your game before you were actually hit by what they what they had cast at you and you would get killed so we had to worry about that me and me and the buddy that played but man bail runs for just hours and it's the same thing same tactic he's spawning these guys got to cast this stand here it was fun and why was it fun that's interesting to me why why what because oh, would, would that be acceptable that today? Too. Would that be acceptable? It probably t- would be. It depends on what mode you're in. Because I remember mm-hmm. I used to play RuneScape a lot during middle school. And I remember that's just, I mean, that's not even, I mean, it's like Diablo 2. All you're doing is clicking. That You're just clicking the whole time. There's not even macros or anything like in Diablo. Right. He's clicking. And I'm clicking in this one spot to fish sharks non-stop and waiting there clicking to fish sharks then we're going to click over here and walk and then click to cook the sharks and then I'm going to go over here and put them on a bank and I'm going to do that again for a couple more hours mm-hmm. and I'm like why was that fun That that's not fun that I couldn't go back today and play RuneScape everybody, I agree it was a classic it was fun mm-hmm. everybody got back into it when 2007 or whatever rebooted yeah, I, I could not go back and play that though it's not fun to me anymore to just click and watch my dude walk across and go do something it's not interactive enough. Mm-hmm. So, see, I don't know. See, Diablo 3, I played Diablo 3, and I had high hopes for it because of my love for Diablo 2. And I never it. Yeah, it, uh, and it sucks because Blizzard still is really good at making those kinds of games and sticking and making you feel like you're playing a Diablo game, but they just had to. They just had to have the real money auction house. And that ruined everything. They had to say, they said, well, because, you know, it's exact, this is exactly what happened. Bob, Bobby Kotick, when they acquired Blizzard in Activision, he, he looked at their assets. He looked at the assets of Blizzard and, and Blizzard North or whoever created Diablo. And he looked at him and said, okay, well, you've got World of Warcraft. That's a plus win. But what else do you have? Well, you got Diablo. Well, okay, we can make Diablo. People have been crying for Diablo 3. We're going to give it to them. But what can we maximize out of Diablo? Well, Diablo itself, is the name is going to sell. But, eh, you know, there's there's got to be something else we can do. And he started doing research, or he had people do the research. And they, they realized there are all these websites, auction house websites, making so much money from the sale of Diablo items. Because you you could trade items with people, but there was no real money auction house. If you wanted something now, and you didn't you didn't want to you know grind to get in game gold to go to the in game auction house, right? And there were websites devoted to that, making a lot of money. And he said, Ah, there it is. That's where we're gonna make our. That's where we're gonna push it over the top. And the simple way to do that was, oh, well, we're taking the real money auction house and putting it in the game. We're making it safer to you. You don't have to trust these people that you don't know. You're, you're dealing with Activision and Blizzard, and, and we're the intermediary. And that's how they're going to sell it and sell it and sell it. And it just, 
the the quest to squeeze every last little nickel diamond penny from every square inch of the Diablo franchise killed it. And it, it made Diablo 3 always online. Same thing with SimCity. Mm-hmm. Always online, always this, so that we have control, so that we can squeeze every last little nickel and dime out of you, or out of the game. And, and, that, and that ruined it. The idea that, you know, lag could kill you, and, you know, there's no offline, and it, it completely disrupted the in-game economy. You know, there was no good loot drops. You had to go, if you wanted to build a high-level character, you had to go to the auction house. You had to. Yeah. And that, that ruined it. Absolutely ruined it. So really? basically, screw you, Bobby Kotick. You're a bastard. And your acting role in Moneyball was absolutely awful. I hate you. You're a crappy yeah. actor, Bobby Kotick. Nobody likes you. Go home. Spark. Sports. Sports. Yeah, I'm missing the Bears game for the show. I could have not done the show tonight and watched the Bears' second preseason game, but I didn't. All right, while we take a break, somebody uh, tweet me, TNWYC, tweet me updates on the Bears game if you are watching it because I want to know how bad Jay Cutler has sucked because Mark Trestman doesn't know what he's doing. Sports talk. That's not why you call. we got a lot more coming up in the last half of the show. We'll be right back. Sturdle.
why. That's not why you called. Thursday, 7 p.m. Central. That's not why you called. <laughs> Welcome back. That's not why you called. Are you like middle-aged white woman in a Bruce Springsteen concert? Is that was was that your uh, your your mime there? Bros, I don't, love bros. Don't hate on the boss and what he can do to women. All right, because he's the boss. He's, he's the boss. Did the Super Bowl? He shoved his junk at the camera. Fucking douchebag. He's the boss. He's the boss. What are we talking about? <laughs> uh, we were talking about what were we talking about? I don't even remember. Professionalism, exactly. <laughs> oh, you wanted to know about the Bears game? Who cares though? Um, somebody sent you a photo. Go look at it. Uh, no, I don't want to. I I got stuff to do. I got to run the show. I don't got time to be clicking on gazos and stuff. Somebody tweeted me Jay Cutler's four or five for like some odd yards, a touchdown, and fourteen. Yeah. yeah, but it's preseason. It's just it's about the preseason in in American NFL football or NFL football. Is, um, it doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter, but it's about it's about you. You look at narrow things. You look at, well, is this player? Does this player understand the position? Is this you know? Is this middle linebacker making the right reads? Is the is the offensive line picking up the Mike Rusher? Is, are they picking up the you know the the rush? Are they being fooled easily by line stunts? This or that? Um, you look at not winning and losing. You look at how. Each individual plays their position how they're supposed to be playing the position. Like in this case, is Jay Cutler making the correct reads in the West Coast offense? Is he, um, you know, is he holding on to the ball too long? Is he taking the three step drops? You know, giving him his uh, his offensive line a chance to what? 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 What's your what? issue with football? I have no issue. But he's got... I was bobbing my head back and forth. But yeah, you were being matter. sarcastic, you jerk. Preseason don't matter. Everybody knows that. <laughs> No, the, the the outcome of the game does not matter, but yes, the the you nuts and bolts the of the players. Game is, but that's matter. about it. Unless yeah, somebody really it. fucks up in preseason, then you will not see them in the season. <laughs> right, and you also look, you know, what young guys, second, third string guys are doing okay, but it's kind of often hard to tell because you know a third string guy beating up on another third string guy doesn't really tell you. Doesn't anything. really tell you much. No, no, it doesn't. No, so. What's the point? It's basically. Would you quick, quick question? Would you mm. recommend payday two to people? Yeah, a lot of people have been asking. Uh, it depends on what you want. That, that's uh, that's the thing. If you are, you uh, obviously missed the part where I said quick. No, well, there's no such thing as quick on this show. We got two damn hours to fill, man. Yes or no? Would I, no, I can't. I refuse to answer that question. I refuse to whittle down my endorsement of a product to yes or no. I refuse. No. I have integrity. <laughs> you funny. don't. You're a whore. All right, answer the question. <laughs> uh, it depends on what you want. If you if you're going to be playing it in a single player capacity, uh, no, it's not. You don't want. There are plenty of other games, you know, that you can get even for that price that uh, have a story, good writing, all that stuff. However, if uh, if you if you play on PC or on console when you can get your hands on a copy, if you got a lot of friends, you guys play a lot. It's a it's a fun game. It's it's action packed. And now they add with the advent of you know payday was such a huge success. They have devoted a lot more to it. You don't have to go about the same heist or the same mission yeah, objective like in the same missions. way. Yeah, there's no no no. There's a ton. They added a ton. We just no. I played. meant there was only like oh four. yeah. First one. Right. There were only four missions, and you had to go about them the same way each and every time. Uh, this time, that's not the case. So you can go, you, if you want to build a silent class, you want to try to do it, you know, Ocean's Eleven style without firing a shot or killing anybody, you can do that. If you want to take 19 duffel bags of cocaine when you only need eight, you can do that. Hey, we got paid, okay? Yeah. Paid. And we basically learned how lucrative the cocaine trade is. Yeah, so, we're going into the trade. Uh, by the way, update to TNWIC. We're going to be discontinuing the show while Chiz and I pursue our now lifelong dreams of becoming cocaine dealers. Going to South America. Because we're going make, to make a lot of money. We're going to grow the cocaine. Because if that game is to be believed, and I know that video games are the accurate. absolute verified truth, and I take them as gospel, and I apply everything they teach me to my everyday life, 
then two days of work in the drug business grants you about eight hundred thousand. Cops die very easily, <laughs> even the whiteheads. Right, even the whiteheads. You just gotta pop them. Pop yeah. them in the head. Pop the whiteheads. You're good. They die easily. There's mm-hmm. always a helicopter to pick you up. Always on time. Doesn't get shot down by another helicopter. In fact, the police don't even use helicopters mm-hmm. in drug heists. No. And it's very lucrative. Yeah. Yeah. Like and it. you can regen health. Getting well, shot no, doesn't you regen your armor. And well, but if if you got a doctor's bag or you know you're wearing you body armor, it doesn't butt. hurt. Yeah. And also, apparently, walking into a bank wearing body armor over your suit, nobody really cares. Hey, just, you just might be really precautious when you're put it, cashing your check. You know, with you know, you go to Live Leak, you see all those videos of cops beating the crap out of people. Maybe you should start wearing a bulletproof vest around. Everyone do it so that way when me and Lefty walk in. To, uh, <laughs> well, you know, you know, there's a lot of job. there's a lot of states that outlaw body armor. You can't own body armor legally as a citizen. Uh, why not? I feel like well, well. Let's explore. Let's unpack that. Why like, would that be? Well, so because the police wouldn't be able to do anything. If mm. you had well, no, no, Go not that they wouldn't be able to do well, anything. You know, it would they, be a lot harder. Yeah, right. It would give you an upper hand. Well, all right. Here's the think of it. All right, let's talk about it like this. Then, are, do those same states also outlaw over a certain caliber and don't allow like hollow points and whatnot? Well, uh, if, you a, point. if you have a vest, you know, there are countermeasures you can use to get through said vest. Mm-hmm. But well, if they prohibit both... Or, po- police, you know. as I understand it, tend to use hollow point bullets, which are easier yeah. to stop. Well, stop. As in, I mean, when you get shot with a, shot with a bullet, it's still going to hurt you. There's so much energy break a rib. in that thing. It's, it's going to mess you up. Where a hollow point is like a shotgun shell. It, it, it flattens out. Impact. It's not designed to go through you. It's designed to go in you and, and flatten destroy. out and impart all of its energy to you rather than, um, you know, just a rifle bullet or uh, or even 9 millimeters usually go through people. I don't know. Yeah. But I know but rifle bullets, they, they go they go through you. They, I mean, a bullet passing through you is still very traumatic. A 22 will go through you. But um, but police generally use hollow point ammunition, which is designed to flatten out stopping power. Um, police are all used as stopping power, the whores. Uh, but those bullets, you know, the, the air shit up. The, what's the up? Huh? Oh yeah, air shit up. They they yeah. they nick your they screw up your internal organs, turn them to mush, razor claws. You're dead. But those are easier to stop with a with a Kevlar vest because mm. they're designed to dissipate energy. And that's the, that's their job. Just like you know, getting shot with a shotgun without a vest, you're dead. But a shotgun blast is isn't that big of a deal for a Kevlar vest. Yeah. Whereas you know, a rifle bullet, not many vests out there. Then you have to start getting into the ceramic flak jacket stuff if you want to stop rifle bullets mm-hmm. that are actually designed to go long barrel rifles go through you and right. hurt you really bad. So. But yeah, a lot of a lot of states and municipalities don't allow you to to ha- don't allow the citizens uh, to own body armor. What kind of bullshit is that? I don't know. I feel like it can, it can go fifty armor. fifty. That's the thing. It can feel like it can go fifty fifty. It's like you should kind of have the right to it if the police do, you know. But at the same time, it's like. Your Joe Schmo doesn't need body armor. More than likely, the person buying body armor is the individual going to do something where they will engage in an act that may end up with them potentially being shot at. See, but you you tripped right over it. I mean, it's not about... I know what you're going to say. Well, you know, but they don't, okay? (laughs) Well, what did the boil and screw you too? That's not a bad thing. Get the hell out of the call then. You don't talk anyway. We can get on without you. It just means we know you. Right. But I knew as soon as I finished my statement, I know where you were going to go with What this. am I going to say? You're going to say it doesn't matter whether it shouldn't be allotted someone, you know, oh, mm. well, if you're engaging in a situation, it doesn't matter. If this, if it doesn't, it's the same argument applied to how many, how big of a magazine can I have? It's the same argument applied there. Who's to say I may need or not need this? You cannot, you know, you should not be allowed to say that, especially when certain individuals do get to wear body armor like the police. Mm -hmm. How come they can say I cannot wear it then? It's essentially what you're going to say. It's the same argument for the magazine clip. Pretty much. close in the ballpark? All right. Well, you can't reduce the, 
the, well, is it okay that we are restricting rights? Because that's what laws do, right? The, the, the Constitution, the American Constitution gives us all these rights. Laws restrict those rights, passed by the Congress, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, if you're going to throw your lot in with a law that restricts a right, which is body armor is, I would say, is, you know, isn't specifically outlawed by the Constitution. So, okay, you're going to restrict my right to own body armor. Well, if you, you can't, it, well, I would say it's imprudent to say the need you know, you may need or not need this or that isn't a, a, an effective way to argue that this is acceptable because, you know, I don't always need to be secure in my home against unreasonable search and seizure. I don't always need that. I'm not always making use of it. In fact, there are many people that go throughout their lives never making use of that. But does that mean we throw it out? No, because... The, the back it's supposed to be a backstop against all that stuff so you know divvying up and carving up rights based on well you may you don't really need that is i think um you know you're going down a path that is definitely very difficult to come back from but it goes both ways well okay yes that but it still comes down to what is the most likely reason that it is outlawed in those states i don't want to get shot that's my I need. Don't want to get shot. That's my that's my reasoning. Yes, I, but usually the people that don't want to get shot, they get a Kevlar vest, are more than likely going into a predicament with not the best intent. Your average Joe Smo isn't walking. He may be open carrying, but mm -hmm. he's more than likely not wearing a Kevlar vest because he's not thinking that way. Right. But some people do. I'm not saying that there aren't some people that probably do walk around with Kevlar all the time. I'm just saying the reason a state would probably ban them is for that reason there. Well, some people, if, if people have the right to drive, or excuse me, the privilege, because they always make that distinction, the bastards. <laughs> if people are licensed to operate motor vehicles and have ready access to motor vehicles, they may put themselves in a situation where they're driving getaway for criminals. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we restrict access to motor vehicles then? You can't let, you can't be, sure. you can't be giving you know, allowing people to become wheelmen for crime syndicates. You're right. You're you can't right. do that. You're right. Ban all cars. I'm all for it. <laughs> Make a hyperloop. The hyperloop. That's cool. Yeah. We didn't talk about that. Yeah, the hyperloop. We didn't talk about that. Now, who is this guy? That He's the creator of PayPal? Uh, PayPal and some other big ones. I bet if I just type in hyperloop. I remember his name. Uh... Elon Musk. Mm hmm Elon Musk. Tesla Motors, SpaceX, and PayPal. So Rich. Yeah. <laughs> and a visionary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the idea is is that it's a um it's an electric thing, right? For Yeah, magnets. For places oh magnets, okay. So oh, I'm assuming electric magnets. Um or electrically powered magnets. For cities separated by less than a thousand miles, right? I think it's up to a thousand miles, if yeah, I remember correctly. Miles. Um, the idea is is that they have a stationary, like a train track, basically. The idea of of just a, an immovable, just a course, traveled by uh, pods, as he calls them, that move at at very very high speeds, covering the th the you know the thousand miles or thereabouts in. Um, in only you know thirty minutes an hour, and um, and it's a really cool idea. He even said he's like, well, you know, if you build it big enough, you could have people drive their cars onto these pods, and then the pods close, and then they go. Right. Yeah, and uh, and that's a that's a pretty cool idea. Way better and smarter to implement that than the high speed bullet train California voted in. Like a couple years ago. How much is that thing going to cost? Like $64 billion, I think. Yeah, because we need to be spending and money. And it's going to take kind of until stuff. 2022 yeah. for it to be finished. And it'll still take two and a half hours from San Francisco and where I'm at to LA. How, so, how far and is that in, in linear miles? Uh, fuck. 600, a little more than 600, probably. Okay. It takes about six to seven hours to drive down there. Okay. It's about that many. 
And but because um, the whole problem is acceleration to get up to those speeds to get you to traverse such great distance, mm-hmm. it'll still take me to go to San Francisco. It'll still take me two and a half hours on there to get there. Where I take Greyhound, it'll take me two hours because it doesn't get up to those speeds. It only goes like 80 or 70 or something in certain areas. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that was a great one to vote in, which it won't be done for another. <laughs> Who knows if I'll be in this state when it's done. Fucking. Yeah, but um, bullet trains. $64 billion. <laughs> we don't do trains anymore. We're not good at it. Japan and the rest of them, they did it right. I'm not going to top that. Except for Spain. Spain didn't do it right. <laughs> we did it right. We don't put the right people in the trains. Put speed freaks in there who could take a turn. Double boasting about it. boasting about it on Facebook. Facebook, yeah. Uh, that dude was look at how stuff. fast I'm going. If, but don't tell anybody because if they find out, I'll get fired. Well, why do you think they're gonna fire you? What did his friends say? What were his friends saying? Yeah, because you got all those people in that big ass hunk of metal you're doing that's that's one kid who never got a model train set as a child and didn't go really fast on the turns he did not know how you go really fast on the turns once and then it falls over you say huh i can't do that okay (laughs) yeah and you've learned so when you get into the real thing you don't do that no i'm i i i i want the hyperloop but i feel like i may be dead by the time it comes around nah well maybe See, I, my only thing, my only thing about it is that it, it's it's really, really, really dangerous. Well, here's the thing, because I always have this talk with people about. I have a different issue. You have a different issue. Okay. Yeah. It's 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 dangerous, but it, it, like when people talk about uh, the 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 danger of air travel versus driving a car, right? Like, oh well, th- thousands of people die every day on the roads. How many people die in you know, plane crashes every day. It's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, pl- flying a plane is safer. However, my thought on it is, well, I can survive a car accident. How many plane accidents am I going to survive? If a plane crashes on takeoff or landing when it's most likely to happen, what's my probability of surviving one of those things? Pretty damn good as long as the rescue vehicles do not run over your head. Because <laughs> it's been proven you can slam into a seawall and walk away from it with luggage in hand. Yeah, but they were that was the the ass end of the jet slammed into the seawall. It's not like the jet careened in and hit the seawall and then cartwheeled onto the tarmac. That was just pilot error. They didn't they didn't adjust the flaps right. But they, did you see that one? This was a couple months back, the one where the cargo plane Oh, the, that one, the shifting the cargo. Was, yeah, yeah the, the cargo hit the back and that one was yeah. scary. That one just went and yeah. it just came, bam. And, and you know what? That's giant explosion. Imagine what it's like to be the pilot on that. Because the pilot knows immediately. Yeah, going. he's up there. When it's like this, he's like, fuck. We, you know, like, we're stalled. Wait. We stalled out in this. I, what was it? I think it was like a C-17 Globemaster. Yeah. Or a yeah. C-5, yeah. C-5 it was Globemaster. It a cargo plane, so it was it something was huge, that big. And when the pilot, when they, because the shifting cargo shifted the, the aperture of the, or not the aperture, whatever, the, the positioning of the jet, and it went upwards, you know, faster than it was moving forward. And so it killed their forward speed and they stalled. And then the pilot knows that. And they yeah. were a couple hundred feet off the ground. The, the pilot Enough. is like, shit. And now he's got like 30 seconds to just wait to die. Yeah. There's because no eject you're in not, a cargo plane. Not even 30 seconds, like a couple. Yeah. And you're not, you're not going nose deep, you know, because if you do it high enough, you stall, you come back down, and then you can pull out of it. Yeah, but but he was only like he was a couple hundred feet off the he ground. Was like a belly flop. And this is this is not yeah. a fighter jet. It came down flat. So, but uh, what's your concern then? Oh, my concern is the numbers are not what they say they are. Like the speed, I believe, and all of that, but I don't believe I can pay twenty dollars one way and mm-hmm. go to L.A. from here in thirty minutes. I just don't. I don't see it starting up I, that way, but maybe eventually. But that's the numbers they proposed. That's what they said it was going to cost. Um, well, if no, they can I get just, the power, you know, whatever powers it, if they, they've got to generate the electricity to do it. I'm assuming it's going to be electricity. Maybe if it went to Vegas, then I could see that coming because Vegas has their electric. Their electricity is essentially free. So Actually, surprisingly, Vegas doesn't get a lot of electricity from the Hoover Dam, does it? No, it's very cheap electricity there. Oh, okay. Very cheap. 
but I just don't see that happening. When a bus, a train, and a plane all cost the same. Granted, they all run on gasoline. Well, you know, certain of petroleum. Yeah. yeah, it's not the same, but to get electricity going, most of California is still ran off coal and everything. Mm-hmm. You know, you need a huge fucking wind farm. I just don't see twenty dollars one way. Mm. Well, if the if a significant portion of the nation's electrical infrastructure switched over to nuclear power, which while again, it's like it's like air travel. When something goes wrong, something's probably wrong really that. screwed up. Oh. But other than that, we've been you know screwing around with nuclear f- what was uh, the last one? fusion. Mount Island. Well, uh, the Japan. Oh yeah, yeah, that was because of the tsunami, two which years is ago? yeah, pretty bad. Yeah. But, um, but again, you know, re- reactor safe- safety is something that a lot of people, you know, it's a target for terrorists, yada yada yada. But it's really, really cheap electricity, and it's because you you don't have right, you don't have to dam a river, you don't have to screw with the ecosystem, you're not pouring hydrocarbons into the air. It's just it's U two thirty. Not U two thirty eight. U two thirty five. No, it's U two thirty eight. Is it uranium? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but then it, it turns the into other one. It, it, lo- there's uh, another um, radioactive uh, element they're using, and I think Israel. It's not plutonium or uranium. It's I something or th- It might be a th. I'm thinking of tritium. Thorium. It might be thorium. Thorium. thorium? Yeah. Okay. But it's just it's just neutrons. Yeah. Moving around, heating up water, and that water does stuff. No, it's okay. steam. It's just steam. Now, you, the, that that area, I mean, that water, you got to do something with that. you got to find yeah. a way to dispose it. And eventually, those nuclear fuel rods are they're going to be essentially out of usable neutrons. Do you know how they – they haven't done it yet. I forget what mountain they're – they're making the site to you know store all that shit in mm-hmm. but do you know how that works like they're not just putting it in a room and locking it away they put it into the actual like the salt uh it's big mountain they put it the barrels in there uh-huh. and then eventually with time the salt and whatnot it all just it encloses in on it just all around it mm-hmm. like you can't get to it like the rock and everything and then just crumbles it down it was really cool <laughs> the like, same guys sitting the there sa- the same guys doing being katie now what? <laughs> yeah, the the guy that was a, trying to impersonate me. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I, I saw that. I was like, that's not her. That's not silly. Her. But the speed thing, like, I don't know, because we had like the Concorde and whatnot, and that fucking flew at twenty one hundred miles, and we retired that. You know. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if the speed thing really worries me. If anything, I'm sad that we aren't there yet. Twenty one hundred miles was like mock three or something you could see the curvature of the earth when you were flying mm-hmm. i think it was at like eighty thousand uh feet in the air as opposed to the normal thirty thousand i know you're up super high yeah yeah i want more of those do you want more concords yeah you hear the story about that one of them was taking off and like tire from another uh was left on the tarmac and it went up into the engine it, it crashed into i think i remember that yeah yeah i remember that it was cool because it was like the way the nose was built. It it was, it was it was like angled. It moved. The nose moved. It was. It was oh like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they had a blind spot when they were coming. It was like a giant crane. What? <laughs> now yeah. being silly. Modern avionics is pretty cool. Yeah. Yep. We need faster. You know what I don't like? I don't like uh, big ass jets that only have two engines. Don't like it. <sighs> now they're rated like what is it the. The A380, the Airbus A380 has four, right? That's the biggest one, right? Right, that's the biggest commercial jet commercial plane, in yeah. existence. Is the Airbus A380. Boeing, the, I think it's the 777. The it's the 777. Well, the Boeing's trying to come up the 787, the luxury liner, and they've, they're having battery issues. Batteries are starting on fire for some reason. Um, but I think it's the 777. Also a very large plane, obviously not as big as the A380, but it only has two engines. Now, a lot of people yeah. remember... Uh, the seven fifty or the seven forty seven, which is a big ass plane, still around. and it's got four engines on it. Now I like a four engine plane because if you lose an engine, you only lose twenty five percent of your available power of your available thrust. Right. When you lose one engine on a two engine aircraft, you lose fifty percent of your available power. Now 
all those planes are they they can fly on one engine. The two engine planes can fly on one engine. Yes. But that's scary. No like Especially likey. unless you have Captain Sully in which both engines go out. That's mm -hmm. then you're fucked. You only have two. Yep. You just shot it down to zero percentile. Of and then you're just a big aluminum glider, and you Is don't the glide that well. Boeing's biggest version right now. I don't. I don't know. Whatever their biggest one is, they're gonna take their biggest one and make the next Air Force One, whatever Ooh. that one is. So that'll be. Thanks, cool. Obama. Yeah. I to <laughs> All right, we are gonna take a quick break. Come back for the home stretch of that's not why you call it. I think we've covered exactly zero topics planes. that we originally planned. Yeah, but we've talked about quantum mechanics and planes and stuff. We got a lot more along the way. Be sure to hit that like button. It does help us out, and we greatly appreciate it. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Ice cream spaghettios.
not why you called. Thursday, 7 p.m. Central. That's not why you called. Welcome back. That's not why you called. Home stretch. I need a sound bite for that. Well, even if I had a sound bite, Katie wouldn't play it. Who so it doesn't play. really matter. Who would play it? Katie wouldn't play anything. Katie, are you muted? She's just not talking. You're a, just a You're just a barrel of just awesome tonight. I'd never mess with anything. Oh, maybe you were typing and um you usually uh, unmute it though. Oh, uh, usually? Oh, I don't know. Cuz it, it looked so. like you had said something but uh Nothing, nothing came out. So, but yeah, I mean, I would make a sound clip, but Katie, you wouldn't play it, would you? No. Good. Really earning that money mm-hmm. from that hundred and fifty thousand dollars. But you know, let's just make it two hundred grand. It's easier. Round up, round up. Yeah, two hundred <laughs> grand, and you get the most professional podcast on YouTube. Two hundred grand a year. It's got to be. I mean, we're, if we're going to make a commitment, you know, you're gonna you got to have at least two years. I mean, we'll so four hundred grand for two years. And you've got the most professional podcast on YouTube, plus yeah, whatever it, it upfront costs. Right, know. and and p- plus whatever upfront costs we need to get a storefront and, uh, you know, like a, or a warehouse if people want to visit live, the live bands. Yeah, live bands, live musical acts. And if you want <laughs> guests, we have to pay them, obviously. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Why do you think they aren't here now? You guys aren't contributing enough for nope. guests. Not contributing enough for guests. If you like the video enough, if you, if we get two thousand likes, Chis will burn his headphones, and we'll get a guest. So with two thousand likes, that's what we'll do. You're trying to to fake out the mute thing, but it's not working. Who me? Yeah. No, I'm just mouthing. Oh, Fuck okay. Yeah. I wasn't okay. trying to fake it out. All right, that's. <laughs> so yeah, that's where Breaking we're... bad. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Everyone tell Lefty to watch Breaking Bad. No, I don't want to watch Breaking Bad. Yeah, you do. I don't. I don't. Because then you'll learn how to make meth. Meth makes more money. No, no, we're good with. I'm good with cocaine. <laughs> cocaine. No, no better because margins. right, better margins. But still, think about it though. Crack cocaine. If I'm a crack cocaine dealer, the first time I get caught, well, I'm going away. We I'm moved going to crack cocaine. Or meth. Meth isn't is more uh, is a is a steeper penalty than cocaine isn't it yeah i, I don't know i looked into it i, don't I know, know there's that discrepancy between crack cocaine and cocaine well there's a big difference <laughs> well no the, well but what, no well actually well if you want to get into that that's that's a um a pretty subtly subtle version of institutional racism the idea that what? cocaine cocaine pr- possessing and distributing cocaine is markedly more acceptable via, you know, looking at uh, mandated sentencing, more acceptable than crack cocaine. Yeah. No. They're different. They're not. They're cocaine. They're different. And they screw you up. They're different. How? Crack is way harsher. And whack. It's also whack. Whack. Oh, my... (laughs) I just had to do Dare that. program graduates right there. Mm-hmm. Mm. Or maybe it's crack and methamphetamine then. It's, it's whatever. It, it's, it's, it's a very clear. There's the white people drug, and then there's a the drug that a lot of black people use. And one. Cocaine is like a party drug, like just like weed is. It's well, then maybe it was methamphetamine. Maybe I was confused. But I thought it, there is a, a large discrepancy in terms of what is, like how screwed you are from a legal standpoint if you get caught distributing one drug versus crack cocaine when they're essentially like the same thing. They're very, I think it might have been meth because meth is awful and it screws you up. And you, you know, you see the pictures of people, meth addicts and how they change in like six months mm-hmm. and the, the thing it does. It, so, so it, it probably is meth. I apologize. I was mistaken. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but yeah. From a legal standpoint, it's weird how they classify drugs. Like, I don't know if it really falls in the legal thing, but like marijuana is it like, Class one narc, not narcotic. Class one drug, but something cocaine is two, mm-hmm. and one is the worst. I don't really understand that how those work. No, I even think narcotics is below marijuana. Mm-hmm. 
And those are like painkillers and shit. And those will fuck you up. Yeah. Drugs are bad. Drugs Stay are bad, kids. Fine. Crack is whack. Just had to say it again. Oh, yeah. I wanted to talk about this. And we want to talk about maybe a little bit about the Cod Ghost reveal. I fly is back. See, I've been struggling with this. Whether to talk about the return of iFly Illini. And I, I don't want to... See, because the reason is I didn't want to bring it up because the guy, from what I've heard, has, his time away from YouTube has been absolutely awful for him. And everything he does in his life has is, is just been affected negatively by this. And, and I don't want to... I didn't want to talk about it and make it a, you know an entire segment devoted to it because... Number one, I would have to bring up what I said, and I would have to bring up, you know, what what was what he did, and what happened to him. And I didn't really want to, um, so, and I've been struggling with it. And because, you know, my initial response is to want to defend what I had to say about him. Um, but, you know, I think that pales in comparison to you know my need to defend my logical points pales in comparison to. Um, what I read, what he says has happened to him in the seven months he's been away from YouTube. So I fly his back, but, um, you know, it's been an awful, awful seven months. And uh, this is probably the only time, at least on this show, that I would like to devote to that. So I fly his back, but, you know, the, the, the hate, the, and this is what I wanted to jump off to. You know, peop, a lot of people show their ass when they start talking about I fly Illini. They really show their ass and just no, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. We're gonna stick with no, because the amount of homophobia and I made this. I made this remark when it initially broke, when I flies. You know, when this thing initially happened. There's a lot of homophobia in this community, like a lot of latent homophobia from a community that is, you know middle upper middle class usually probably around there usually well off people or well better off people not we're not talking you know rich or filthy rich here but just you're know, typically better off people who tend to be more liberal uh but despite that there's a lot there's a lot of people that are threatened by the mere possibility of homosexuality mm -hmm. not that i fly a line eye or anybody came out and said, I'm gay, you know, whatever. Just even the possibility of homosexuality being present just brings out the utter worst of people. And it's, it's really, it's sickening to see as, you know, not only, not only just as a, you know, you're, you're so, you know, you want to think you're so advanced, but you're still so backwards that somebody being gay offends you, offends you personally, what the hell is wrong with you? And also that that offense leads people to say some of the awful things that they do. And I just, I, where does that, where does this, this, well, the community is, is very, very, has a definite liberal hue to it. But where does this homophobia come from? I feel like it's just something to attack him on. Like a point. Like, even though all he was doing was fapping on camera, somehow that relates to homosexuality i don't know that how they make that correlation but they can't call him fat they can't mm -hmm. attack his race because he's white what are you gonna fucking say mm -hmm. so the only other card in the book is you're gay i mean what else is there to attack someone as a, as a character yeah but the i don't really think the, the majority vitriol of people associated have, with it I don't think they've really got an issue with gay people i want to say 60 percent of those people mm -hmm. but i feel like they attack in that manner just like, to attack just to just to attack they'll the fly that of flag of homophobe just yeah. to okay that that's yeah. logical and i don't even think it's really like homophobia it's just the fact that like the word gay or fag or something is just it's negative it's not saying the actual being gay is negative but it's come no to but that there's a lot of there's a lot of I've, an insult. i saw a lot of people say you're gay, you're a fag, that's so gross, what's wrong with you? Like, attacking him for being... That's homophobia. 
I mean, not in a clinical sense where you're, right. you're afraid yeah. of, of getting, no, I mean, right, okay, right, right. Like yeah. somebody's yeah. going to try to split Against that it, hair. Right. Well, it's not a phobia. Okay. But homophobia is an umbrella term. It's not a, a strict narrow. We're not using it in the narrow medical sense. But in terms of attacking and, and deriding people for being gay, I just, I just found that odd that there were so many people without a thought. And maybe that's, maybe that's, maybe Chiz, you're right, that that speaks to not necessarily them being, Dis- actively disliking homosexuals, but you know, looking for anything to attack people with using the anonymity of the internet. And if right. that's the case, then I'm that that almost makes it worse to an yeah, extent. Because I mean, look at like Optic Midnight. She gets some haze and whatnot, but not to the point of where iFly got mm-hmm. hazed for when those comments made. And she actually is uh, homosexual. And mm-hmm. people accept her, and she's cool and nice and stuff, and people mm-hmm. like her. So Not everybody. Uh, no, not everyone, of course. There's still going to be those outliers. And those are the people that fall under the homophobic umbrella. Mm-hmm. But they don't – That's and if people do want to attack her, that's what they pick to attack her because she is that thing that Even though they may her. not actually be – because there's, there's homophobes who dislike her because she is gay. But then there's also people – or and d- dislike and attack her because she's gay. Right, but there are people that attack her because she's gay, not because they're homophobes, but because they're just looking for anything to attack her. Right, with. and it's like if someone drops an n bomb at someone, that person may not be a racist, but they know that is the mm-hmm. the word they can drop that'll cut the deepest to hurt that person, which is what they're trying to do. And but then what does that say? That um, you're a dickhead. That that no, but but think about it. That no, 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 no. It goes deeper than that because think about what that says about the animal. That the second anonymity is provided the second that the possibility of consequences become so far removed so as to be considered non-existent the idea of consequence when that happens look at what the what people turn into yeah Pretty much. what was that roll in the head what was wrong no, that was i was reading something else it had nothing to do with what you were saying oh, okay because I, well, I thought like whoa i'm offending jizz <laughs> like, wow no, my bad no but the, what that's that's gro- that's makes me feel sickened inside to be associated with this species that we're not ready to do anything if yeah. this is what happens when you say look there are no basically no consequences for what you do you can say anything you want and this is the result ugh ugh that's just no we 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 need to stop going into space we need to stop seeking out other intelligent life. We we shouldn't meet them if this is what we are as a as an animal, as a species, as an intellect. We we are not deser- I mean, we're going to have to evolve before we I I give us the go ahead to go ahead and start meeting other species and and exploring the the, the our world around us in earnest. I want to meet other species. What's that? I still want to meet other species. I'm not a dick. <laughs> right here. I'm not don't a dick either. I'd go. I'd go be a. Mar- would you go be a Martian? Would you go live on Mars? Would no. you be one of those no. people? In the current state? No. What are you fucking high? What? Seen pictures of Mars? Yeah, exactly. That's well, what it is. Well, of course, <laughs> it's a. It's a separate yeah. planet. It's not a. Yeah. It's not an, a, an inhabitable planet for no, its own it's sake. Not. We have to make it inhabitable. <laughs> it, no. it was of funny, course, um, yes. It was funny. Rooster Teeth made a joke. Like they were talking about that. Like, would you want to go be like? No. It's like, well, what about? Mars, Instagram, or Facebook, or whatever. Like the whole, your whole timeline and feed would be from these nine people, and it's like, look, found more red dirt. You know, <laughs> that's all there is there. Mm-hmm. That's I'm, I'm good. Really. I'd be like just moving to like the Mojave or something. No thanks, I'm good. It'd be like, and someone made this argument before, like, wow, what if you were the, or I might have even said, like, if you were the first vlogger from Mars, you would be huge because everybody would want to huge on and, YouTube. You, yeah, huge on YouTube. Huge, yeah, on YouTube. And everybody <laughs> wanna watch your videos. And it's like, that's great. And I'm gonna make so much money, but what the fuck am I gonna do with all of that? Money, money that doesn't on Mars? mean anything. The money I can't that doesn't buy anything. But think of all the things you could do. If you're on Mars, you could live stream copyrighted music. Oh, Unless they I just do. cut my ties from the internet oh, yeah, in the US. But still, yeah. what is what is Disney gonna do? I'm drawing Mickey Mouse and I'm profiting from I got Martian dollars. We're trading this, you know, rocks and stuff for my personal <laughs> drawings of Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Fuck you, Disney. A bigger rock than me. What are you gonna do? Yeah, what are you gonna do, Disney? Your copyright only applies to the Earth. 
I don't get why that has to be a one-way space trip, though. It's like, if you can get us there one time, why can you not come back? Because you gotta build, you gotta, you have to send the, the launch vehicle with, like, you have to build, it's essentially you have to build two launch vehicles. You've gotta launch from Earth and then land on, yeah. on Mars, and then that, whatever you send there and land, has to also be a launch vehicle. But why can't they just do it like what we did on the moon? Because you, fuel, it's, fuel, yeah, it's fuel's so a big much deal. Farther away. No, stupid. Fuel Anyone is a huge deal. For that has nothing going in their life. That's why the first, uh, the external uh, fuel tank for the space shuttle, the first one was white, was painted white to match the uh, solid rocket boosters. But after that, they realized how much it cost to lift just that paint, just in fuel yeah. costs to lift that into space, and they were like, "Screw that!" So yeah. the idea of you know you've got to send. You know, you've got the container not only has to have, or the, the launch vehicle on Earth for the initial trip has to have the fuel to get it to Mars, but also has to have the fuel to get it back from Mars. And that extra fuel to get it back from Mars, you also have to lift, which necessitates more fuel. Right. So it's a... Uh, you know, what was a good Mars movie I just saw again the other day. I think it might just be called Mars... I forget who's in it. But Please not the yeah, Val Kilmer one. Please not the Val Kilmer one. Is it the Val Kilmer one? Let me see real Where quick. Where there's, there's like algae on Mars. And they have this little, this rover that was there before. It's like some AI oh, no, thing. No, 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 okay. no, not that thing. But I do know that one, actually. Awful movie. Don't they, isn't that the one where they come in and it inflates like whatever thing their lamb or whatever that they're going to hit and it inflates yeah, but then I the bubbles so. break? I don't remember how that one went, but I know it didn't end well. Well, no, um, it, it, th that they were stranded and they were worried about oxygen, yeah. and then they they found there's algae growing on growing yeah, on Mars. Exactly, that was um, stupid. And there's oxygen that, there. I found but, that one. But or then one. their like their little AI companion, their little machine companion, went mm -hmm. uh, crazy. Yeah, I remember that one now. No, the one I was talking about. I forget who was it. If you've seen the George and Lenny of Mice and Men movie, mm -hmm. it's. Uh, George in that, whoever that actor is, I can't remember. Um, and that it, it's the one where the guy these, that got arrested for trying to hire a hitman to kill his wife. That guy? No, no, no. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, but they go to Mars and like one dude goes there and he gets stranded, but he ends up making like an ecosystem in his little bubble or whatever. So he manages to live there hmm. in his little bubble. But they go there and they find like a precursor, and it's like this story of where originally Mars hmm. was like Earth, and then something bad, like, you know, meteors hit, so they all flew away mm -hmm. with their genetic code, but then one spaceship went to Earth, uh. and it was that, and it was this race, and the guy who found it, he, there was still a precursor person there, and he went in their spaceship and then flew to where all those other ones flew off to. It was like, whoa. Okay, yeah. I, got, I just got an interesting tweet, hashtag TNWYC, from this guy, this Mission idiot Mars. named Jeff. He's... Um, He's only got 180 characters, but it's still somehow proven to me that he's an idiot. He says, oh, so God. basically, so people can stop being assholes, we should let the NSA take away our anonymity? What kind of paranoid tinfoil hat do you have going on in your head? Where did I say anything <laughs> about the NSA? What? We don't have that much time to cover the NSA. Are, like, are, where are you? This, you know what? That's imaginary podcasting. You are listening to an imaginary podcast, Jeff. We did not say those things. You're a dumbass. You're responding to voices in your head. We did not say that. We, I was just talking about the, the, the very fact that the animal, when granted anonymity, reverts back to its natural animalistic state, which Hobbes theorized was a, a war of all against all. And That's not, what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the you, evolution of the animal, not the anonymity itself. And I never even mentioned the NSA. But even, Nobody but, did. But even Moron. if you did, like, you're not, you're not anonymical. I'm making up words now. No, that's a, that's a good word. You know what? Good word. Yeah. And, and you're not. You're not. Right. Katie, write that down. <laughs> you're not anonymous from the NSA. They are watching everything. Just because you use a fake username on YouTube doesn't mean they don't know who you are. It's the fucking NSA. So how does taking away anonymity? Um, say we're pro NSA or anything like that. It it mm -hmm. doesn't. The oh, NSA uh, is watching you. We can all use our public names and everything legal. I could say my name on YouTube. That's cool. Doesn't mean the NSA has any power over me. I don't know how you make that fucking correlation whatsoever. Those were leaps and bounds from anything discussed. 
Yeah, that's 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 my first interaction with imaginary Hard. podcasting. That's <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? We should imaginary podcast more often. Is our imaginary podcast good? I don't know. Like the like it, and we'll find <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. Like the imaginary podcast. Like to, this to, video to do too. That, you need to double like this one to yeah, get gotta, it into the realm mm, of the hypothetical imaginary. Yeah, you gotta like. He says, "Well, that had the well that had the desired effect. I know I was just messing with you. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. That no, you weren't. That that's that's everyone no. does that when they get called out. Or oh something. yeah, that's like I was just I was, I was just joking. playing. I was just playing. No, no, Jeff, you made a whoopsie. That is, that is the equivalency of getting banned on a forum back in the day and saying I didn't really say those things. My brother got on my mm -hmm. account and started posting those. Oh yeah, the athletes them. like when athletes say something really dumb, they're like, oh my Twitter account was hacked. Yeah, uh, dude. I I okay, bro. Open. Yeah. You know, was no. Jeff, you made a you made a whoopsie. You you had a brain whoopsie. Just admit it. And we'll we'll all move on. It's okay. I make them. You make them. Everybody has just their their brain just goes bleh once Before in a while. Before we even made that statement in response to his second tweet, someone had tweeted him and said, "Yeah, right. Now you are just covering your ass." <laughs> Before we even <laughs> said those things. Uh, poor guy. It's okay. I mean, and, and that's, hey, a, that's the, a legitimate it, question. Don't be butthurt, by the way, because the person we ripped into, what, it, what was For the it? professionalism thing? Professionalism. Yeah, he's that guy. He's still around. Okay. He's still around. He's a good guy. He got, we were just, that's our deal. We just, I mean, we lampoon people. That's okay. It's fine. But, you know, when you, when you get called, when you say something dumb and somebody says, that's, that's dumb. you be like, yeah, yeah, it's dumb. Not, I was just <laughs> kidding. I, yeah, it's just a joke. I didn't really mean it. Because you know if it was really a joke, what you would have followed it up with was oh. LOL, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. An indicator that it was a joke. Yeah. People hey, saying, what do you man, I'm going to punch you in the face. Okay, I've seen it in the comments 5,000 times. You've tweeted it 5,000 times. We've had the same amount of viewers in here since we started. And Woody started streaming maybe t 10 or 15, 20 minutes ago. That's fine. So no, he's not. And even if he was, big fucking whoop. Okay. You know what? Actually, after the show, Woody streams Minecraft. If that's your deal, go check it out. Which is, which is, it's Twitch. We'll, we'll raid him. All right. It's, when we're done here, we'll raid him and you spam the chat with that's not why you call tags. Yeah. Spam Woody's chat with hashtag TNWYC after I'm the show. What's the address? What is the address? Woody's Gamer Tag. Oh, twitch.tv slash Woody's Gamer Tag. Also, <laughs> while you're at Twitch, go check the description. Chiz has got a streaming channel. Um, that uh, yeah. that he streams to regularly. Oh, that's my question. I needed to. I wanted mm -hmm. to get people's advice about oh, yeah. investing into live streaming because Chiz and I were talking yesterday and today um, about Ch Chiz has basically talked me into buying Saints Row Four and streaming it. But I was like, I was breaking down the numbers of like, okay, well, what do I want to invest? I want to upgrade my the RAM of my PC to sixteen gigabytes of twenty one thirty three. Um, and that's the maximum allowable for my operating system because I'm a genius and got Windows 7 Home Premium and not Windows 7 Professional or, or uh, Ultimate. Um, but I want to get 16 gigs, so that's 160 bucks for that for that clock speed, um, which is which optimizes streaming, which is good for encoding video and stuff. And then Batman Arkham Origins is coming out, and I want to get stream and do a let's play of that. So that's 49.99. Saints Row 4 is another forty nine ninety nine. Battlefield 4 is going to be like 60 bucks or $70. Um, and that's coming out soon. Grand Theft Auto 5 is going to be another 60 bucks. And so just adding up all these things, what am I going to have to invest to, uh, to, to get my streaming game back up and running? And my question is, do I have the commitment? I don't know. I, I, I just want to get people's, uh, people's thoughts about, well, one, me live streaming video games again and two just uh, just general reinvesting in your business right because that's the idea you know talk about uh, companies do it all the time we're reinvesting our corporate profits blah, 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 and we're reinvesting to to bring you better products how much is prudent to reinvest in your business because i think we did the math chiz and it's it would cost like what almost 300 400 for, for all the stuff coming wanted, out yeah. in the next couple of months 400 bucks which I could do that now. I could go right now and buy everything and have it. Okay. And I, now I have it. Well, is it reasonable? I don't know. So it was a quandary I was having. So we yes didn't do it the no. source corner. We didn't do it the source corner. Oh, we got to do it before the show ends. Oh. Chiz, Chiz, you go first. Chiz, you go first. 
Ready? The source corner and stop. Oh, well, oh. well I was. Th I wanted you. I want to let you do the <laughs> intro. Okay. All right. Here we go. Again. Ready? <laughs> the source corner. Welcome with to the source corner with Lefty. It's NPR. Cheers. You're up first. Ready? Go. Start. Okay. Left or right panel? Left. Left. How many? Words bottom from? three. Three from the bottom or the yes. The okay. <laughs> launch. <Jesus. laughs> the verb. If you mean the verb launch, which means to initiate. You can also say, originate, start, or get going. If you mean to send off when you use launch, you can say, set in motion, propel, drive, thrust, fire off, send forth, or eject. Eject. Katie, do you want one? Eject. Sure. You, wanna, you wanna go on this train? Sure. Right. Beat that, Tommy, me, I'm, I'm too- All right, we're gonna, we're gonna go the other way, ready? Stop. Damn, I was like, we're getting to the end here. <laughs> All right, left or right page? It's the index. Uh, we're going to go with left. All right. How many words down from the top or bottom? We're going to go at the very top. The, the first word at the top? First oh, word. Shit. Oh, wow, you hit jackpot. Uh, no. <laughs> Restraint. If you mean the noun, which means, if you mean control over oneself, you can say control, self-control, reserve, reticence, constraint, withholding, caution, coolness, Forbearance, silence, secretiveness, stress, repression, self-government, self-restraint, stiffness. Oh, God. Fucking Google Hangouts. Uh, <laughs> abstinence, self-denial, unnaturalness, self-repression, constrained manner, abstention, self-discipline, self-censorship. Or, in the end, uh, antonym of that, or antithesis, laziness, slackness, laxity. If you mean an influence that checks or hinders, Holy when you crap. say restraint, oh yeah, there's more. <laughs> you can say repression, deprivation, limitation, hindrance, reduction, abridgment, decrease, prohibition, confinement, check, barrier, obstacle, obstruction, restriction, bar, curb, blockade, order, command, instruction, coercion, impediment, compulsion, duress, force, violence, deterrence, determinant, or determinant, discipline, Assignment, definition, modernation, or moderation, not modernation, tempering, qualifying, and the antithesis, freedom, liberty, license. This oh, has been the source that. corner. I think that fuck made that. up for my last, like, There you go. The yeah, the, yeah, the last couple ones have been, I think that made have been up. pretty bad. <laughs> this is a weekly game, and we go against each other. She's going <laughs> to mm -hmm. fucking nail that one out of the fucking park. That yeah. went on for like two minutes. Mine was like four words. <laughs> what happened? I was like, yeah, launch. It's going to be great. It's like five words. She's got a half a paragraph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, like, it was like almost a, a, like a third of the page. God. was that. <laughs> so that's a perfect way to end. That's not why you Wait, called no, no, another. No, no, you have to give them the poll. What poll? Saints Row 4. Should you get it? Oh, yeah. Should Saints Row 4. Should I get it and or uh, invest in live streaming? So let us know in the comments. Uh, if you're watching this VOD after you like and favorite the stream, go ahead and let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, you can also tweet us, hashtag TNWYC. As always, there are links in the description for everybody here. Check out the uh, TNWYC subreddit. There's also a link there. Um, we got to get out of here. Go to twitch.tv slash Woody's Gamertag if you're interested in Minecraft. Spam TNWYC hashtags. Let them know that, uh, that I'm I'll sending be in him it some looking, viewers. So you better be yeah, there. Chiz will be there. Uh, yeah. Let Woody know that I do contribute a little bit of something, even though I'm yeah. not uh, not Spam up there with right the Titans now, that, are on, too. that are on PKA. Anyway, thank you guys for joining. We hope you enjoyed. We will be back next week, Thursday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, or Daylight Time, right here. Thank you guys for joining. We hope you enjoyed. We are out. Peace. Shit talking mushrooms. Push. Or whatever. <laughs> Why should we go for your pushing example? something? I don't know. Okay. The one for me that I don't like is... Um, I need this by this certain date, you know, mm -hmm. like I need this by the 15th. It's like, well, do you right. need it beforehand or do you need it on that day? You know, it's like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. 16th is the cutoff. Well, does that mean if I do it before the 16th, it's the cutoff or mm -hmm. the 16th, you won't take it past the 16th. Where is the gray area? That's where know. we're at language. Yeah. We need to default as a society to different, settings we need to know if you say you know on three we need a default setting where you can opt out of either going on three or the count after three you can opt out of that 
but you have to specifically say, no, 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 we are going, you know, after the, we're doing the spe- we're doing the special one, right? Because we ne- we all need to default to, you know, this is the way everybody does it. So let us know in the comments or tweet us hashtag TNWIC what kind of guy you are. Or I'm coming person. up with uh, 505 games. I'm seeing. 505 games published uh, payday on console. Mm, yes. <laughs> oh, okay, that's right. I remember seeing that on uh, on Reddit. Well, whoever they are, they fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody's gonna get fired. Probably the guy at the loading dock. <laughs> Some low level guy. didn't show up to work that day. Like, I'm the driver. What do you want from me? <laughs> you got to take the game to the store. Uh, I'm tired today. Got to the game to the store. Now, some people are saying you can get, uh, you can order a hard copy online, like from Amazon, and you'll get it. But actually, going, walking into a retail shop, you will not be able to find copies of Payday 2. So, then what? It's something related to their to a distribution issue. Well, it's got yeah, it's got to be an infrastructure. If Amazon can do it, then it's. I mean, Amazon has their own distribution. Mm-hmm. So whoever published it already sent it to Amazon to warehouse. So whoever is at the GameStop, Walmart, etc. warehouse. Is ah, it could be the wholesalers. Yes. Ah, you see, that's a, that's not an often talked about medium. Between, the between yeah, between the publishers and the retailers, store. you know, because people think, um, you know, for instance, since we're going to be talking about Call of Duty Ghosts, that's another topic we got on the docket today, talking about Call of Duty Ghosts reveal. Um, people like uh, Call of Duty every single year; it's a race to see how much money the Call of Duty title can generate in a week, and they multiply the number of sales by. You know what your what the average sale price is usually somewhere around fifty nine ninety nine, and they say, oh, it generated this amount of money, and so a lot of people immediately attribute that amount of money to Activision, but yeah. that's not really the case because the retailers, well, actually the retailers don't make very much money. They don't make that much. They they the make a little, not a, not a lot. The wholesalers make about what ten dollars a unit, something like that. They yeah. make a good amount of money per unit, and then. The publishers get whatever that is. So publishers are probably only taking home about, I don't know, I'm just going to pull a number out of thin air, but that sounds relatively reasonable. Probably 30%. about 30% of each yeah. unit price? Yeah. I was going to say 40, but okay. Chiz, I get nothing out of you. Usually coming out of the, you know, you do this. I was sending a tweet. I was sending the tweet Kill to the me. screen. You know, I didn't screw up the intro. Yeah, unprofessional show over. That's it. Thank you, everybody. We got to get out of here. <laughs> Appreciate <laughs> likes and favorites, as always. Is that our new sponsor? Sponsored by whales. What the hell are... What are what whales? The, what That's are those? like Walmart these the, version of... No, Walmart. these are... Dollar store version of oh. Coldfish. All right. Oh, really? Oh, so like where well, I get okay, that makes a lot. Of... <laughs> that's okay. All right, that's fine. They're not smoky barbecue, but they're still good. Smoky barbecue wheat thins, that's what we need. Uh, who, makes these, who makes these sons of bitches? Nabisco. Nabisco. Nabisco, send us money. You now owe us for. Got Cheetos stuff. Um, anyway, welcome all of you to uh, that's not why you called episode fourteen occurring. I got the date right. 
August 15th, 2013. Chiz, thankfully, yeah. uh, let me yeah. know. I'm um, not doing this in the past. Yeah, I definitely got caught copy-pasting hey, titles. Was added. Thank you, Katie. Oh, no really? Problem. Is Katie going to play sound, sound bites? No. So many. See, That's you know, she could have added it before the show started, but she didn't because she was busy, no. busy stuffing her face with steak. I was and hungry. now I'm hungry. And now, right, and I'm pissed, not well, because you were eating and being unprofessional, because you know this show is nothing if not totally professional 100% of the time. Hey, there are people out there that agree we are professional. Right. And they hold us yeah. to that standard and they're angry. Yeah. Or not. yeah. Attendant <laughs> is professionalism. <laughs> We've showed up. We've showed up. That's like, what, 99% of life? One of those cliche terms? 99% of life is showing up. Right, what's that crappy baseball movie with Keanu Reeves? Yeah, it's a piece of shit. I've never seen it, but it sucks. I don't even know what you're talking about. Hardball, I think it's called. Everybody loves it. It's, it's a universally loved movie. People are like, oh my god, Hardball! One of the kids freaking dies. There. Saved you two hours. Wow. You didn't never heard of it. So. Alert. Yeah, you, you don't even I get a really spoiler alert for that. I to watch it. No. I just, you know, everybody, it's up there with The Godfather in terms of if you haven't seen it, you're a gigantic douche. I'm a gigantic douche then. Well, I, I like we needed to, like we needed your yeah, lack like of. The movie was the qualifier. Right. To that's the that's the pushover. That's the that's the tipping point at which. I was on the eh, Just kind of a bad guy. Now you're a douche because you've never mm -hmm. seen Hardball. But uh, but yeah, it's one of those movies. Anyway, I'm your host, Lefty, as we try to get through the propers on this awful. Who's that? Awfully professionally show. Professional. Professional. Damn it. I'm your host, Lefty. Um, I appreciate, as always, everybody that likes the stream, likes the video. Uh, VOD, I love seeing the scroll, the roll of likes on my Twitter feed. Um, it does help the show, and we greatly appreciate it. Across the way is our host, Dr. Chiz. You can follow him at Dr. Chiz on Twitter. You can also find a stream, a link to his streaming page uh, in the description, twitch.tv. Is it Dr. Chiz or Dr. Yeah. Coffee MD? Is it twitch.tv slash Dr. Chiz? Damn, Dr. Talking. Talking. <laughs> Katie, Twitter, on the description. Nah, Katie is a producer. You that... sound exactly like my character in Payday. <laughs> <laughs> your Katie, you're laughing. You don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> what were you laughing at just there? What was I laughing at? Yeah. I don't even remember. That was a pity laugh. That was a pity laugh. That was just a, I'm laughing because I'm supposed to laugh. Pretty much. At something. <laughs> I'll admit it. Because you have no idea the joke that we... Nope. You I'm reading stuff. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. Carry on. <clears throat> Proceed. So how many things do you laugh at that you don't normally yeah. find funny? What is but that you just no, feel... To be honest with you, that's probably like the fourth time I've ever done that. What, what other times have you done that? I don't remember. Places? I'm just guessing. Probably around four. Do you do that with me regularly? No. Don't even. No. Stop it. I is concerned. No. Oh my god. Yeah, she got busted fake laughing at stuff. Faker! You're faking things on YouTube, faker! Phony. <laughs> You're a big fat You're a big phony. phony. Oh my gosh. Really? Katie's our producer that doesn't talk and doesn't play sound bites. I don't. And everybody gets mad at Apparently her. Apparently fakes laughing. Yeah. What else do you Worst fake, Katie? <laughs> really? Because now I'm worried. Oh my god! Now Stop. I've planted that thought in my own head. Oh my God. And me no likey. Goodness gracious. <laughs> if you want to get in touch with the show, you obviously have the comments in front of you. We greatly encourage you to do that. Uh, but also, you can tweet us, hashtag TNWYC on Twitter. Just add that to your tweet. We will be able to read it. Pound sign TNWYC. Pound sign. Pound. You're doing it. What are you. What is, it's this, bro. Yeah, I was going to. But my finger's in. holding. So oh, there you go. Yeah, Pound. yeah. You've got four other digits. Still looks kind of like Not four other. You've got two other. Four other digits. <laughs> Counting. Four digits. Yeah, you've got you've got uh, you got six fingers. Is that that that's the dominant gene, right? Is what? six fingers? Humans being born with six fingers. How is it the dominant what? gene then? I heard that's a I I maybe it's just a myth then. That it's the, it sounds a lot like a myth. The dominant form of the gene is, or whatever gene denotes. So you're, you're, right. So, every so you're person saying that has having the normal gene. Right. It's just. Mm. It's just. Uh, like if a parent somehow. 
passes that gene on, then you're just having it. It's There's not. It's no not like a. It. It's not like a finger. It's like just a little nub. Um, there was a pitcher in the major leagues for a while, Antonio Alfonseca. He had a he had a sixth finger. Oh, he was, but it was cheating. No, no, it was just a little nub. It didn't, you know, it wasn't really anything. So it wasn't functional or anything. Yeah. So thirty uh, percent of each unit price, and that's and that's just that's total. That's not profit. That's net. Right, and then because out of that you got to pay for the the stuff. So the games business is a prob- is a little bit harder than uh, than what people like to think, but. The advent of digital di- digital distribution changes that equation because yep. no longer you you no longer have the overhead of the retailers, which wasn't much overhead in the first place, but still it's a little bit. Mm-hmm. And the wholesalers or the function of the wholesalers, which is distributing your content, <clears throat> that cost is greatly reduced because all you need now are servers. Yeah, to distribute it. You don't need to hire staff and overhead and all that. You stuff. don't got to pay truck. You don't have to pay truck drivers. You don't have to, you know, do anything. All you got to do Definitely. is just digitally copy the game. You don't have to pay for for packaging. Every copy you sell digitally is a copy that you didn't have to pay to, to have printed, packaged, and shipped. But games still cost on digital. Only, but that's for digitally. Because, like, look at the games that are still around the same price as something you can get in a retail store. Mm-hmm. As opposed to, like, an indie game, which is way cheaper. Mm-hmm. It's because, you know, it's the same reason why the Xbox Marketplace is still more expensive than, like, a used game at GameStop. It's because they can't uh, give you a huge discount on the digital distribution because then they're fucking their, uh, retail, their re- retailers mm-hmm. in that regards. So they can't do that because they're competing. they're competing against themselves, essentially. Until you completely get rid of the retail side of it, you're not going to see things on the Xbox side start to drop their prices. Same goes for Steam, though, too. I mean, Steam, look, they drop... Usually it's $10 cheaper Mm -hmm. for a PC download over... Even a disc, a PC disc is still cheaper than what you can get for, like, the console version of it. But it's the same issue because the game's cross... It's multi-platform. Whereas something that's only on PC, like, is usually way cheaper when it's only there. And it's distributed digitally. Like well, Payday 2, mm-hmm. I don't know why that one is cheaper. That's cheaper across the board. I guess it's just because it doesn't have a solid single player. No, and it's it's not, it's very, um, the thing about Payday is that it, it's not, uh, it's not particularly story driven. There's not a lot of voice acting, writing, narration, animations, there's not, are there any even any cutscenes? I don't think so. I mean, they they filmed no, some just live those action intro stuff. Things. Yeah, transitional. But and, and that's it. That's that's all they 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 do. And payday is. I don't know how to really to describe it because even even a game like um, Borderlands Two, or Borderlands has a storied component, even though it's multiplayer. You there's still. Yeah. You know, you're still doing stuff. But payday two, it's very. It's just here are the levels. Here are the objectives. Well, that's what's interesting, like, where Titanfall is going to give their price point. I assume Titanfall will still be, like, a $59, you know, mm-hmm. $59.99 game, even though that's even in the same... It's the closest I can think of to a game like Payday, where it is just strictly a multiplayer thing. Like, Titanfall is just a multiplayer game with some campaign elements to it, mm-hmm. like, on-screen stuff and shit like that going on. Like, there's a kind of story but they've i mean if you look at how they've been making it behind the scenes and everything it's a multiplayer game so but that one's gonna be pushed for 59.99 and because they can get the creepy. ball though yeah no he could no it was just a little ball. nub here and you hold the baseball or like in this area of your hand on one side but of the hand you're, you if you're going to throw it and you curve it though where your pinky is that extra finger could add some more backspin to it <laughs> it could he's a cheater and totally off on everything he achieved. ever achieved. Okay. Oh gosh. It, which wasn't all that much. I don't think. I don't remember. Was Antonio Alfonseca any good? I don't remember. Yeah. I like he was. He was around for a while, but he wasn't. I don't remember him exactly being dominant or you know the stuff of legend. So no. you wouldn't be taking away much from Antonio Alfon- Alfonseca. I am Antonio yeah. Alfonseca. So. But yeah. That dude was cool. <laughs> we got a lot to talk about this week. A lot of people are tweeting us, so they want to hear about us talk about UM, what happened at UMG Atlanta. 
with uh, an ML or not an MLG team, but a pro professional Call of Duty team getting in a little bit of hot water and um, having a short lived run with a professional team. Um, also, what else we got on the docket? The Xbox One. Mm-hmm. Stuff. No the Xbox One stuff, and then there's <laughs> there's things. Yeah, the Xbox One doesn't require the. What professionalism? Yeah. My mask looks like eyebrows and a mustache. <laughs> See, there you didn't you didn't pity laugh, Katie. No, because I you still didn't. didn't get the joke. No, it's uh, no. <laughs> just it's something stupid. We played Payday too. That's a you know that's a perfect perfect segue because we like to start off the show as we always do, talking about what we've been doing on our respective YouTube channels. Um, uh, we Chiz and I actually today sat down and played Payday Two, which is out now on Steam. You can go check it out. Not Payday on Two, console. not right. It's not a, well. It's out on console. You can buy it on console if you can find. Yeah, if you can find physical copies, because I guess Valve publishes that, right? So it would be Valve's Valve. Do they? I would assume so. Valve publishes. I mean, who Do else? They? Well, Overkill is the developer, and Valve, I think, is the publisher. I think it's a Katie, it's a. Google. Yeah, Katie, if you're not going to play sound bites or talk, <laughs> Google who published um, or who is publishing Payday Two on um on console. I want to see who's who's sending that. But yeah, what what was the story with that? So there's no physical copies. The release date has come and gone, but there are no physical copies at retail outlets yes they forgot to ship them they did they forget to or was it I think don't <laughs> quote me on that we're going with it what other option is there they didn't print the disc then they'd be backed up for like a month yeah i i don't know if it was just a maybe like a database error somebody you know they they put down the wrong date they were off by two days you know somebody said well it's you know it's the 13th or the 12th and then they put down you know the 14th ship by this or maybe it, maybe it was as simple as ship by versus ship on. Maybe. Because I know that's, you know, because, maybe. right, you always have that problem with people. It's like on three. Well, wait a minute now. Is it on, on three, three? Is it after three? Right. Is it the count after three? Because you get the cadence. You get one, two, three. Is it as soon as I th- say three or is it one, two, three? 